Welcome to the fantasy audiobook. Marvel. Sign in Sparkling Fruit. Saving Wanda at Experimental Lab at the Beginning. Chapter 81. The dignified future leader of the ex-police was slapped unconscious by a teenage girl even though he was under the control of drugs. This is simply a shame. Fortunately, Scott wasn't particularly petty or overly aggressive, otherwise, he would have to remember that girl for the rest of his life. Having said this, Hank said, Professor, do you know the approximate location of the battle? Probably near Houston. Hank nodded. He walked to the desk, opened the laptop that the professor usually used on the table, and started operating it. After a while, Hank's eyes lit up, found it. After that, he stepped aside so that the ex-police behind him could see the screen displayed on the computer. On the screen were several pictures and a piece of information, 193, displayed. What was displayed above were several drones. In the bird's eye view shot, a layer of the highway of about 10,000 meters was cut off by a powerful force. Not to mention the fracture of the highway, there were countless large and small pits nearby, and the dense cracks were tens of thousands of meters in diameter. This picture everyone watching was shocked. I entered the back end of the Houston Police Department network system and found the information and patterns transmitted to the police station network for on-site investigation. The federal government has intervened and formed a joint investigation team with several cities near Houston. It's hard to imagine how fierce the fighting was at that time. It was no different from a missile-covered bombing. Storm Aloro clicked her tongue in surprise, her eyes full of horror. This destructive power is somewhat terrifying. Cyclops also nodded. Several overhead views allowed the X-Men to intuitively feel the intensity of the battle at that time, and also understood the seriousness of this incident. Professor, tell me, is it a coincidence or intentional that Mr. Li Ang fights the evil in the unknown dimension? At this time, Beast Hank suddenly asked an interesting question. This question also aroused everyone's thinking. Coincidence and intentionality are very interesting points. If it is a coincidence, it is easy to say, but if it is intentional, it also means it seems that Mr. Li Ang has some way or means to predict how to find the evil, and this proactive type can also describe Li Ang's profile in more detail. Because taking the initiative to fight against evil proves that Li Ang is biased towards the defense camp. Including the history of raids the precedent of Trek test base, this may not be too small. The professor pondered for a moment and said uncertainly, it may be a coincidence, but it may also be a deliberate initiative. But no matter what, that evil aura has disappeared, and this time the winner should be Li Angsheng. Oops, what's the use of speculating here all the time? Why not just make a phone call and ask? Don't we have contact information anyway? Wolverine Logan said impatiently. Although he was straightforward, his words stunned everyone present. Then Charles showed a helpless smile. It seemed that he had made the problem complicated. Although they and Leon were not familiar, but at least they have communicated. Asking a question will not affect the relationship between the two parties. So, he motioned to Hank, who took out his mobile phone, found Liang's contact information, and dialed the number. Beep. After a while, the call was connected. Hank turned on the loudspeaker, and the familiar young boy's unique and clean voice came from the other end. Good morning, Professor, Hank, and Jean. A simple greeting, but it shocked everyone present. Li Ang knew that there were other people besides the professor. If it weren't for the foundation of trust and confidence in himself, they would all think that Li Ang was installing something in the school. A bug or a miniature surveillance camera was installed. But this was obviously impossible. However, it was enough to add a sense of mystery to Li Ang. Professor. Charles did not think so much, and responded with a smile. Good morning, Mr. Li Ang, sorry to bother you. That's not true, I just got up. Li Ang said with a smile, and after a pause in his tone he continued, Professor, do you have something to do with me? Was the professor aware of what happened last night? Although the last sentence is a question, the tone is indeed affirmative. Sure enough, Li Ang's response made the professor and others look at each other. What happened last night was really related to Li Ang, and the previous guesses were answered. At this point, the professor is no longer trying to hide things from you, he speaks straightforwardly. Yes, there was a lot of noise yesterday. There is no way, this time the opponent is different. Oh, can you tell me, Mr. Li Ang, I am also curious. Professor Charles asked with a serious face. There was a slight silence. 
Even these short few seconds of silence made the X-Men members present feel as if it had been as long as a quarter. It was for an unknown person. The sense of tension and anticipation of the mysterious evil exploration. Fortunately, Leon answered and spit out a name, Mephisto. Mephisto. This name shocked everyone present except for Logan. Their eyes suddenly widened with shocked expressions. Hank couldn't help but shouted directly, Walt. Mephisto. Is this the Mephisto I know? Ye, I think it's the Mephisto you know, Mr. Hank. On the phone, Li Ang responded, but with a smile in his tone. But no one paid attention to this, and all their attention was focused on this name that only existed in concept. Mephisto, in the legend The Demon King Who Dominates Hell World 4.6. When I think of what the professor said, the heavy pressure suddenly comes up. You must know that Mephisto is fundamentally different from his previous opponents. It is not that they are different, but that they are not the same person at all. The existence of dimensions. Magneto Eric, the old enemy of the X-Men, is not qualified in front of Mephisto. Because the concept of hell appears in everyone's mind. All kinds of bad associations flood into their minds. Since Mo Fisto has appeared, what does his appearance mean? Does it mean that he wants to covet the earth, open the door to hell and come to the world, turn the world into the back garden of hell, etc.? This is really a big surprise. Hank touched his head and smiled bitterly. Tell me, I'm dreaming. The devil of hell. The pressure brought by this name is too heavy. But Professor Charles thought of something and asked. Mr. Leon, how strong is Mephisto? If it is the one from hell, there should be more than that. Although the overhead view of the battle was terrifying, it was enough to prove the intensity of the battle. But if it was Mephisto, the scope of the damage shouldn't be limited to that. He wouldn't be surprised if it destroyed several nearby cities. It's so unreasonable. Something is fishy. Sure enough, Liang gave the answer. For some reason, Mephisto cannot appear on Earth in his true form. This time, what I faced was just a soul projection, whose strength was completely different from that of his true form. This made everyone suddenly realize. Li Ang gave enough answers and didn't say much else. After politely saying goodbye, he hung up the communication. Professor Charles was very wise and did not ask further questions. After all, the relationship between the two parties is only an initial friendly relationship, and it can even be said that the other party is still their benefactor. However, some answers are clearly understood. But there are still many mysteries left. For example, why Mephisto cannot come to the earth in his own body, then what is the reason for casting soul projections on the earth? Is it for some follow-up conspiracy, etc.? These all give everyone a headache. If the ex-police can help, they don't want to care about Mephisto, but this level of the pressure brought by the character was too heavy. After all, the ex-police were not sure whether the Mephisto incident would affect them. Professor. Charles frowned, looking at the solemn expressions of everyone, his expression gradually became calmer, and he said gently. Mr. Leon defeated Mephisto, which means that Mephisto may not cause any harm to the earth in a short period of time. However, I will continue to pay attention to this matter. Chin, you also need to pay attention to the joint investigation. Team, maybe they might have some surprises for us. Good professor. At the New York Manor, Li Ang hung up the communication with Professor Charles. He was not surprised that Charles could detect something. After all, there are only a few people on Earth who can sense things around the world, except for Ancient One. There are only a few. As for him being the Riddler once, he was essentially just too lazy to explain too much. After all, his relationship with mutants has not reached that point yet. He casually put the phone into his trouser pocket, wore a white shirt, and rolled up his sleeves. Folded at his forearms, and wearing trousers and white sneakers, he highlights his straight body and strong muscles. He looks mature yet still fashionable as a young man. And the main reason why he got up early in the morning is because of his dearest Miss Natasha is coming back from Russia, and of course she is bringing her, family, with her. The four little ones in the family get up early to go to school in a private aristocratic school. Although the curriculum is relatively relaxed, the school time is still very early, and is opened by the housekeeper. He drove the four little ones to school in a Bentley luxury car purchased by his family. After all, although he didn't care about aristocratic schools, aristocratic schools could easily be excluded if they didn't highlight their status. 
As for Li Ang, with the respectful gestures of the maids, he stepped forward. Shi Shiren walked to the lawn of his manor. New York is very beautiful in the early morning. Different from the bustling and lively cities in the city center, the natural scenery of the manor in the early morning is unique. There are also birds, cicadas, and horses coming from the forest and horse farm in the distance. The chirping of the children is like a beautiful symphony. It makes people feel relaxed and happy. Li Ang likes this feeling very much. After all, the pace of life in his previous life was too stressful. After coming to this world, he was able to calm down and relax. It is rare for ordinary people to enjoy this kind of slow-paced life and tranquility. At this point, while waiting, Li Ang wanted to complain about those guys who are ready to destroy the world and destroy mankind. Although this group of people may have various such a tragic experience and unknown tragic past, but if you have the ability to take revenge, then take revenge on the people behind all this, simply the government and the chables. What kind of thing is destroying the world? Calm down and sit in front of the villa, go to the depths of nature, and wouldn't it be nice to go and see this beautiful world on a rainy or snowing day? Even when you are tired, wouldn't it be nice to give yourself a glass of juice, coffee, or whiskey? He is not qualified to evaluate others, but Bo if it comes to you, you are seeking death. Destroying the world, how tiring it is, wasting time and effort and spending a lifetime, maybe he will be killed by some superhero. That's right, I'm talking about you, Thanos. The ideal of family planning is good, but planning for other races in the universe is not good. You have to plan for the earth as well. It would be weird not to get hammered by someone. While thinking wildly, he raised his head and saw in the blue sky, a black fighter plane with optical stealth slowly and vertically descended from the sky. It was parked on the lawn not far away, the wind picked up by the tail flame engine blowing, lawn. With the optical stealth turned off, the black fighter plane revealed a perfectly streamlined fuselage that made countless military fans drool. Kai, the hatch opened, and the metal ladder board automatically fell down, and Natasha in combat uniform was seen walking down together with Yelena, Melina, and Alexei in ordinary clothes. Seeing Leon, Natasha's beautiful eyes flashed with joy. Li Ang, the pace quickened a bit, and she walked over, opened her arms and gave Leon a big hug. I have to say that Miss Natasha's embrace was really warm, and what stood out was the surge and softness. Li Ang enjoyed it very much. He pressed against Natasha's fragrant neck, and Natasha's unique perfume smell came from his nose, which made the adolescent Li Ang a little eager to move. He let go of Natasha without leaving any trace, then ignored Natasha who was smiling but not smiling, and gave Yelena, Melina, and Alexei a polite hug. Hey, welcome to the manor, nice to see you at this time. We are also happy to see you Li Ang, wow, it is so beautiful here, what can I say about this wonderful rich life? Alexei, who was neatly built and wearing a red and white plaid shirt, joked. Leon punched his plump chest to remind this rough and straightforward man, Natasha is the richest among us, and she is in charge. All my wealth, your words offended her. Wow, you know, Natasha, I'm not talking about you. Alexei looked at Natasha and said funny ly that he said the wrong thing, but he must be beaten. Natasha curled up her red lips and shrugged slightly, with an expression of, you have to figure out what to do. Let Alexei had a bitter look on his face. He stared at Li Ang resentfully. Li Ang laughed and said that it had nothing to do with him. Yelena and Melina looked at the harmony with smiling faces. The scene made me feel very happy. The simple humor and jokes once again drew the relationship between the two parties. Except for Alexei, a straightforward guy, the others were all happy with each other, and they got along naturally harmoniously. Li Ang led everyone to the racecourse, Natasha went back to the manor to change her clothes first. The horse farm has breakfast tea and fruits that Li Ang had already ordered the maids to prepare. In the white horse farm, there are more than 10 or 20 strong horses swimming leisurely. Zai was wandering around and running. It goes without saying that the racecourse attached to the super estate is luxurious. In addition to being equipped with top-notch facilities, the environment is also quite beautiful. The buildings of the racecourse are rolling. You can see the gleaming green countryside scenery around, and the white stands. The edges reflect each other. There is a dense forest in the distance as a backdrop. The endless lawns of different heights can also be used as a golf course. 
There is also a lake not far away with quite clear water quality. The private luxury racecourse grandstand is constructed with a wide three-dimensional wooden floor. There is a two-story wooden structure built specifically for the owner at the back. Most of the building has highly transparent glass for resting, talking, dining, etc. The second floor rooftop can overlook the beautiful scenery of the racecourse. Here it is quite far away from the manor house and requires a specially equipped electric transport vehicle. However, Li Ang and Yelena walked all the way slowly and looked around, and there was no need to rush. When they arrived at the second floor open air rooftop, there were no fences around it, and there were there are wooden tables and chairs that are as valuable as handicrafts and sun umbrellas tied up. Sitting on the long wooden table, enjoying today's breakfast tea and fruit, while looking at the horses and the beautiful scenery. Ali Kexi sat on the chair, like Zhang Fei's embroidery needle, holding a small cup, pretending to drink the fragrant breakfast tea, while exclaiming. Gee, this is heaven. Melina also likes it here. After all, no woman doesn't like this kind of luxurious manner. These days are so beautiful. Thinking about her previous life, she suddenly feels that it is the difference between hell and heaven. Elena is more lively. She directly shouted that if she wanted to live here, she would become a waste waiting to die. Yelena's lively look made Li Ang laugh. Of course, you are all Natasha's most important family members, that is our family, treat this place as your own home. Alexei was very happy. He was single-minded and had a good impression of Li Ang from the beginning, not to mention now. He patted Li Ang on the shoulder with enough force to knock a cow down and said boldly, I like you, Leon. Who do you want to beat in the future? Tell me. The great Captain Alexei will tear them all to pieces. Of course, I believe you can do it. Leon removed Alexei's power lightly and said softly. He really believed in this Russian warrior. It has to be said that Alexei is also a warrior injected with super soldier serum, and his combat effectiveness can directly match Captain America. It's just that there are no 50 to 50 buffs and shields that are full of fantasy. Although life in prison is a lot of waste, once you spend some money, you can easily get back in shape. If he really wants to release himself, New York City can rival his superheroes. It's really too much. The most important thing is that he will not be merciful like Captain America Steve Rogers. If he is marked as an enemy by him, he will be like the Russian brown bear and tear him apart in the most cruel and violent way. Broken the throats of 367 enemies and brutally dismembered them. What are your plans for the future? I'm still a little confused about the future. Melina also said it bluntly. Anyway, Leon is the person Natasha trusts the most, and of course she will trust him. In particular, Natasha said that Leon's past and his personality can be seen after several contacts. Although some of Li Ang's characters have a tragic past, he also has maturity that his peers do not have, but he is sincere and gentle, and he is a pretty good person. Yelena stretched out her hand and said politely, I want to learn how to defeat Na here. Tasha. This is what she wholeheartedly wants to do. Li Ang looked to his side with a smile and said, Then you have to work hard. The gap between you and Natasha is a bit big now. Over there, Natasha's figure came up from the stairs, hitting her sister without any courtesy. Believe me, Yelena, maybe it will take you a hundred years to do it. Of course, the greatest possibility is that you will never be able to do it in your lifetime. Apparently he heard the conversation between Yelena and Li Ang. After speaking, Shi Shiren came to Melina's side. Cut, Yelena refused to accept it, but it was inevitable that the people would congress. Of course it was useless for her to talk verbally, but she was secretly fierce in her heart. She must learn Natasha's method of becoming stronger, then herself hard, and then one day defeat Natasha and ride on her explode the opponent's body. Thinking of that scene, Yelena couldn't help but giggle, almost leaving saliva at the corner of her mouth. He completely didn't notice the helpless look in his mother Melina's eyes and Natasha's expression that looked like she was mentally retarded. Wanda and Shelly cover them. Natasha rolled her eyes at her fish-lipped sister and asked Li Ang about the others. Li Ang didn't hide anything, and said in front of Melina and the others, they went to various parts of the world to find, hunt some dark races. Oh, it seems like something happened in the past few days that I don't know about. Quite a lot. But Wanda said that you have prepared a surprise for me, and I am looking forward to it. Natasha looked at Li Ang with bright eyes, 
her red lips raised, and her delicate face that brought disaster to the country and the people was full of expectation. A very nice surprise, let's talk about it later. Leon smiled and did not explain directly, but looked at Melina. Natasha told me that Ms. Melina had been exposed to some confidential research and development tasks by Drakev. Indeed, Drakev trusted me. Melina nodded and said calmly. It's just that this so-called trust was obtained by performing tasks for Drakev for countless years. For this, her hands were stained with countless blood, even those who watched the training helplessly. The child could not withstand the harsh training and died. She would rather not have this trust. But she was not as brave as Natasha to escape. On this point, after Natasha escaped, she was ashamed countless times. But now it is better, at least that the demon has been killed. The nightmare in her heart has also dissipated, so she can accept her past calmly. Leon smiled and nodded to Natasha, who put it on the tablet that you brought from the house. In front of Melina, the latter took it doubtfully. After checking the confidential information on it, surprise flashed in her eyes. Sure enough, you took over his scientific research team. As the Sky Fortress project 80% completed. Facing Melina's eyes, Li Ang nodded. Ms. Melina, are you willing to take over this team? I need someone who can supervise this team, and I think you have had contact with her before. Yes, it's the Sky Fortress project. After using Wanda's chaos magic to modify Drakev's will, he took over the opponent's gray assets and scientific research team. After signing in to obtain the Sky Blade 7 series, he asked Kira to complete it. The technology of Sky Fortress. A high-tech civilization that has surpassed the times for who knows how many billions of years. A mere Sky Fortress technology is too childish. Therefore, the originally tentative estimated time of four to five years for the construction of Sky Fortress was immediately reduced to one half a year or even less. Sky Fortress is used as a foundation for the convenience of cultivating follow-up forces in the future. From the beginning to the end, Tian Renchi has been his trump card, and he has no intention of connecting with Wanda and the others, even if he signs in in the future. Merlot Heaven will also cut off from the forces on the Earth. His plan is very simple. Use the Earth as a springboard to cultivate strength in the future and create a kingdom similar to Asgard. But the angel civilization is secretly here, he will maintain the independence and detachment of the angelic civilization. Two huge forces that are unrelated to each other on the surface, but secretly controlled by Liang's will. It can be imagined that long in the future, a new one comparable to Asgard Germany's kingdom of God faces the universe, but the seven heavenly blades, and even the angel civilization after the birth of Sin In, will serve as another transcendent force. Once the sign in system becomes more powerful and the angel civilization is perfected, his next target will be those bird people in heaven. Those people the resources in the heaven dimension occupied by the birdmen should not be too rich. When the time comes, these birdmen will be replaced by the angel civilization. This is another trump card of his. Since the appearance of the seven heavenly blades, Liang has changed an even improved part of his future. Plan. Of course, these will only be buried in the bottom of my heart and will not be told to anyone, even the most trusted Natasha, Wanda and others. Once they face a new crisis in the future, these trump cards will come in handy. In this a cosmic mess, if he doesn't act like a sixth man, he will easily be killed by an unknown crisis. Caution is engraved in his bones. Melina didn't know Liang's plan, so Liang handed over this scientific research team to her. From Melina's perspective, this is a considerable amount of trust. From Melina's perspective, Drakev's scientific research team is a very high-quality asset. After all, it was Drakev who spent countless years and money cultivating the team. Even a billionaire may not have this resource. But Li Ang left it to her. Melina took a deep breath and nodded. I am willing to manage this team. That would be great. I think Sky Fortress will become one of our trump cards before too long. In addition, this scientific research team has a new technology that needs attention. Li Ang nodded and pretended to give instructions. New technology. Everyone is confused. Yes, this technology is artificial intelligence that I saw in a secret database of Hydra base with incomplete technical drawings. Artificial intelligence. Everyone was shocked. Yes, according to the information, artificial intelligence technology, if it can be completed, should lead the world's technological frontier 
play an immeasurable important role for us and be equipped with artificial intelligence to assist Sky Fortress. Leon explained, it's actually a shitty artificial intelligence, basically Kira from Sky Blade 7. Artificial intelligence development is easy and simple. Sky Blade 7 can completely build an artificial intelligence by itself, and it can even surpass Tony's Jarvis. But, how can it be compared to Kira? And with the gimmick of artificial intelligence, which will be equipped with some technologies beyond the times in the future, there is no need for him to explain so much, and he can just push it just give it to artificial intelligence and that's it. I understand, but the technology of Sky Fortress is perfect, but it needs to fly stably for a long time and needs to be equipped with a surging core energy source. The existing energy engine needs to be constantly replaced to start the energy source, which is too expensive. Melina nodded solemnly, but then asked a question. Leon nodded. Drakev's Sky Fortress is indeed high-tech compared to existing human technology. But it still has some flaws, which is to make it fly. It requires a huge amount of energy. It was originally equipped with a turbine engine and anti-gravity technology, but even so, the annual resource expenditure is not a small amount of money. At least for Lee's existing assets, it is a large expense. Natasha thought for a moment and remembered something. She said, I remember that the Stark Group has a super large arc reactor. The power it delivers is very large. It should be able to support the Sky Fortress to levitate for a long time. However, this technology is the core secret of the Stark Group, and it is not easy to obtain it. Leave that to me, he's just a playboy. I'll beat that guy up and make him hand him over. Alexei patted his chest with a fierce look on his face, as if he wanted to tear Tony Stark into pieces. Tony is missing, who are you going to fight? Yelena rolled her eyes. Um, missing. Alexei's fierce expression immediately became confused. Leon briefly explained the disappearance of Tony Stark. Alexei suddenly realized it, but then his big face was filled with gloating, and he obviously didn't have much favorable impressions of the Stark group. Li Ang continued this reason and thought that the energy problem of Sky Fortress was easy to solve, but the source was difficult to explain. After all, he could not expose the existence of Tian Ren Qi. The arc reactor is a good entry point. In this case, maybe we should be able to make a fuss about Tony Stark. Li Ang pretended to ponder for a moment and then said, Make a fuss about him. But hasn't he been missing for two or three months? After missing for so long, he must have been killed, right? Yelena raised an objection. Li Ang chuckled and shook his head, It's impossible to say. Everyone always has a purpose in doing things. If it weren't for people with blood feuds in the Stark group, then ordinary terrorists or people with ulterior motives would have kidnapped this billionaire. A rich man and a genius arms developer, so obviously we need something from him. Maybe it's money, maybe it's technology, maybe it's something else. Leon is right, I think Tony Stark has a high probability of being alive. Natasha supports Li Ang's argument. In this case 443, do you think that if we save him, will he be grateful to us and give us a few arc reactors? Li Ang picked up the juice and took a sip. Well, it tastes really good. Compared with wine, juice coffee is always the best. Believe me, if we saved him and he didn't appreciate us, I would take an arm off of him and make him no longer a man. Alexei found confidence again, grinned, patted his chest and promised. I think he will be frightened by Alexei and call the police, right? Yelena said narrowly. Ha ha, others couldn't help but laugh. Alexei was not angry or embarrassed by Yelena's joke, but instead felt proud, because for this Eastern European man, his ferocious body and appearance are worth fearing. Proud thing. That being the case, let's save this billionaire. Li Ang said with a smile. After spending a wonderful morning, Li Ang, Natasha and the others enjoyed a very rich and nutritious lunch on the rooftop of the manor. The richness of Koff's rich level lunch dazzled Alexei. Roasted whole chicken, pan-fried steak and mutton chops, hairy crabs and other seafood were all on the table. It took almost 10 or 20 adults to finish them all. Alexei even said with a confident face that he could handle them all. But when they really saw Natasha and Li Ang's appetite, everyone was dumbfounded. Because the teeth and chewing power of the two of them, as well as their digestive systems, were much exaggerated compared to his super soldier. It was incredible that he could eat food that only five or six adults could finish by himself. 
As a result, all the rest was eaten by Natasha and Leon. And being popular is not only elegant, but also fast. Alexei had just finished eating and was going to bite the bullet and eat forcibly because of his previous rants. However, he found that all the food on the table had been swept away, which made him look shocked. During the days when Natasha and Melina got along, were they still emotionally starved? Then Alexei was mercilessly ridiculed by Yelena, a leaky little cotton padded jacket. Of course, this is just a small episode. After lunch, everyone returned to the main manor house. The maids had already tidied up the manor house, allowing Yelena and the others to take a short lunch break, and Liang finally gave out the surprise he had prepared for Natasha. Super Soldier Genetic Enhancement Serum Looking at the injection tube in front of her, Natasha's delicate and charming face was full of astonishment. Is this the surprise you prepared for me? Stretching out her jade hand to pick up the injection tube, her red lips raised slightly, and a ripple flashed through her beautiful eyes as she looked at this little man of hers. She felt that this little man had more and more secrets. He was becoming more and more mysterious. It can promote the enhancement of life level. After injection, your strength will skyrocket. It requires a short period of adaptation time. It is not enough for you to have the foundation of our cultivation in the Ural Mountains. This time will be shortened. Li Ang said with a smile, as if he thought of something. Standing next to Natasha, he reached out and touched Natasha's back. The short vest vomiting Natasha's figure. He continued, of course it will also repair all the wounds in the body. The next sentence made Natasha's beautiful eyes suddenly light up, and she repeated Li Ang's crucial words with a look of disbelief on her face, repair all wounds. Everything, Leon nodded affirmatively. At this time, Natasha's pretty face was full of complexity, excitement, and expectation. She was not a complete woman. After undergoing rigorous training in the Red Room, Derek Fu wanted to be able to let the Black Widows perform as expected, he cruelly removed her uterus. This meant that she lost the natural ability of women to conceive. This was an indelible trauma for Natasha. The haze buried deep in her heart. No people don't want to be a real woman, and Natasha is no exception, but she has lost this function. But now, she has hope. All this was brought by Liang. Natasha looked at Liang, beautiful his eyes were red and affectionate, his handsome face, and his gentle eyes were like a sun spreading warm sunshine, illuminating her. It was also he who changed his destiny so that he would no longer be confused. Now, he is here once and for all, I made up for my remaining regrets and traumas. Li Ang, Natasha couldn't suppress her emotions and reason, so she stretched out her arms and hugged Li Ang, burying her head in Li Ang's neck. Li Ang felt Natasha's unique softness. But now there was no wave in her heart. Instead, she felt distressed and stretched out her hand to save Natasha. He knew very well that under the appearance of this secret agent being rational and strong, she was actually very soft, just like now. She finally opened her heart to herself, no longer pretending or covering up her softness. The two hugged each other in silence and tenderness for a long time. He patted Natasha on the shoulder and whispered softly, Go, Natasha, be your true self. Um, Natasha left Li Ang's arms and nodded tenderly. After an hour, Yelena's incredible scream came from the manor. Oh my, oh my, are you kidding me? How did you do it? On the sofa in the manor hall, Yelena sat astride Natasha, holding Natasha's charming face with her hands and moving back and forth, her eyes almost staring at this face like a magnifying glass. She just went to sleep. One night, after waking up, she suddenly saw the incredible changes in Natasha sitting on the sofa. It wasn't that she was too exaggerated, but Natasha had changed so much that she couldn't believe her eyes. That picture the originally delicate and charming face seemed to have been fine-tuned with some kind of precise plastic surgery equipment. The pores and skin became whiter and became much more delicate. The most important thing was that she clearly remembered the arms exposed by Natasha's short vest. There was a scar on her face that also disappeared. It seemed to have been repaired. As the saying goes, whiteness covers all ugliness. As a Russian, Natasha's skin is white, but compared with the skin of pure white people, it is not white enough. What's more, the pores also shrunk, making her more refined and beautiful, and her temperament became better. As a woman, how could Yelena not be envious and jealous? Her jealousy was about to overflow. Fanatical Yelena she grabbed Natasha's face and asked urgently. 
She also wanted to become more beautiful and more refined. Not only her, but Melina standing next to her also cast envious and enthusiastic eyes. Natasha enjoyed it very much. The madness and envy of her fish-lipped sister, she allowed her face to be ravaged by Yelena, teasing her, but not speaking. Not telling you. This sentence is comparable to a murderous knife. Yelena's whole body suddenly froze. Infinite murderous intent flashed in her eyes. She said in a low tone like a perverted killer. Believe me, if you don't tell your secret, I will use the most cruel method in the world to dismember you, tear your throat out, and take out your heart. Oh, I won't tell you that either. Natasha was unmoved. This made the perverted killer Yelena instantly become like a little girl who didn't have late candy, hugging her sister and coquettishly using the most annoying voice. My dearest sister Natasha, we are biological sisters. Do you want to treat your dearest sister like this? Tell me, sister Natasha. Yelena didn't care and risked everything. Melina beside her couldn't bear it anymore and sat down next to Natasha, staring at Natasha with a pair of beautiful eyes full of tenderness. There was a lot of commotion here, and Alexei, who was taking whiskey from the refrigerator at the bar not far away, couldn't help but shiver. Feeling like goosebumps were about to pop out, he muttered in a low voice, Am I not awake yet? Next to him, Li Ang, who was squeezing juice, smiled and said nothing, looking gently towards the sofa. Sure enough, Natasha, who had given up everything, became different, well, even more sinister. However, he liked Natasha like this. Houston Police Department. The police officers inside the police station were very busy coming and going. In the conference room of the police station, several sergeants of the joint investigation team were sitting on chairs, filled with smoke. The white police chief of Houston stood on the podium, and the projector projected images of surveillance footage from several cities in Houston. The face is not pretty. There was nothing there. Did he just disappear out of thin air? There were obviously tire marks, and the target was Houston along the highway, but the surveillance footage did not find that car at all. Several other passing cars were found. After overturning and reviewing, nothing was found. Those cars were not found at all. It was not on that highway, but on several other roads. In other words, we found tire marks and knew that there were two cars heading to Houston on that highway at that time, but those two cars were not on the surveillance screen. A car. This is really a ghost. Even several police chiefs once thought that the surveillance had been tampered with, but they invited several experts, over and over again, the final judgment is that it is completely normal. But this is too unreasonable. It is almost like the disappearance of physics. The two cars also disappeared inexplicably. It's too weird. Please give flowers and find the clues in this way. Broken off, this made several police chiefs feel angry. The most important thing is that the military satellite monitoring screen was also obscured due to the storm weather at that time. It was unclear what was going on, and then a golden light flashed past. When the light disappeared, the picture was blocked by dark clouds again. Just as several police chiefs were smoking cigarettes and thinking. There was a knock on the door, interrupting everyone's thoughts, and the white police chief shouted after entering, a female police officer opened the door and said to the sergeant, Sir, the FBI is here. Following the words of the female police officer, several men in suits walked in. The police chiefs looked at each other without holding anything in their mouths. The white police chief also had a cold attitude. He looked at the visiting FBI and said, I it's Marley, is something okay? The federal police, that is, the FBI and the city police are not affiliated with each other and are in opposition to each other. There is no superior-subordinate relationship between them, so there is no need to hold each other accountable. Moreover, the local police have always had a different attitude towards troublesome departments like the FBI. Unless there are acquaintances. The leading white FBI agent did not pay attention to the cold attitude of several police chiefs. Instead, he smiled gently. He took out a document and handed it to Chief Malley and said, I'm sorry to interrupt your meeting, Chief Malley but we only have a brief understanding of the situation. This matter has already alarmed many departments. We will not interfere with the investigation of the joint investigation team. On the contrary, we will provide certain help. As for after the investigation is completed, you can close the case and we will not take over the follow-up. After saying this, the expressions of several police chiefs became a little better. Several of them were senior police chiefs 
and they understood the subtext of the people in front of them. They were just to see the situation, not to intervene, to help, and not to take credit afterward. Police Molly Chong Rao looked at the white agent in front of him thoughtfully, this is not like the FBI's style. The FBI has always been rude, and this approach is no different from charity. The white agent did not change his expression and pretended not to hear. Anyway, he is not from the FBI. In the office of the director of SHIELD's Trident Building. A knock on the door woke up Nick Fury who was buried in his desk processing documents. The latter continued to process documents without raising his head and said casually, come in. As the door opened, a tall black man wearing a Kevlar uniform appeared. The woman walked in. He has a nice face and a cold demeanor. The female agent came to the desk with a document, put the document where Nick Fury could easily reach it, and said, Sir, there is news from Agent Fisher. Hum, how was the investigation? Hearing the name Agent Fisher, Nick Fury immediately stopped working, raised his head, picked up the document and looked through it and asked. It was very unsatisfactory. One of the existing clues was completely cut off, making it very difficult to investigate. Agent Fay, 317, Ursh requested to call the science department. Blurred tire marks, two cars disappearing out of thin air. Nick. Fury looked at the information on the document with an expressionless face. After putting down the document, he knocked the pen on the table unconsciously and thought, it's really interesting. It seems that there are things happening here that we can't imagine. Various possibilities flashed through his mind. However, judging from the existing clues, nothing can be analyzed. However, the only thing that can be confirmed is that the large-scale destructive power of that level does not have the smoke and explosion reaction, which proves that it is not it is caused by modern synthetic materials or munitions. Fisher applied to call the Ministry of Science and Technology because he was suspicious of the energy reaction caused by humans. Think they are mutants. It's just that many dangerous mutants in the world are under the supervision of S.H.I.E.L.D. These mutants are impossible. Fury also felt a headache. That level of energy fluctuation was simply terrifying. Although it was fleeting, after seeing the energy fluctuation value, he once thought that the military had dropped a nuclear bomb on the mainland. Don't look at the scene. The scope of the damage on the screen is only less than tens of thousands of meters, but the scope is only due to the yield. The greater the yield, the wider the explosion range, but in fact the energy is almost the same. The temperature at that moment even caused some parts of the surface to be directly carbonized. That's why the impact of this incident is so bad. It's not that local nuclear tests have never happened before. Most civilians don't know it because the government and military suppressed it. The military and government are well aware of it, but this time an energy equivalent to nuclear power exploded on the mainland, but the government and the military did not know about it. This is simply an explosion. The government and the military are still arguing about it. Agent Fisher looked in agreement. Fury knocked on the table and finally thought of something. I remember that the Ministry of Science and Technology recently added two members with very outstanding results. Yes, Leo Fitz and Gemma Simmons. Just let them go together. Yes, dot, sir. After saying this, Fury raised his head and looked at the female agent in front of him and continued, Hill, is there no news from Tony Stark yet? No. Coulson has been paying attention, and none of Tony Stark's friends in the military have given up. Well, let Coulson continue. The guy probably didn't die so easily. This kidnapping should have something to do with the Stark group. Understood. Agent Hill turned around and left after Nick Fury's explanation. Nick Fury looked at the pictures on the document in his hand, his single eye filled with profound thoughts. The strange disappearance is somewhat similar to that incident. Could it Betho's people? The Middle East, due to its geographical location, has an extremely important strategic location. The competition for fresh water and oil resources in the region, as well as religious and cultural differences, have led to perennial instability. The climate in the Middle East is dry and hot, and the region's plateau terrain is closed, blocking the entry of moist ocean air, exacerbating the drought in this area, which is why it has formed a predominantly tropical desert climate. In a remote desert area in the Middle East, the sky is full of blazing sun, and the hot temperature causes the air to it all seems twisted. Here, there is a temporary camp. There are more than a dozen military vehicles and several helicopter fighter jets parked in the parking area of the camp. As Tony Stark's friend, 
Military Colonel Colonel James Roddy Now I look at the distribution map of the Middle East on the computer in front of me with a frown. There is a large dense red area on the distribution map. This marked red area was the area he had been searching for the past few months. Still no sign of Tony Stark. As early as the first month when Tony Stark was not found, the military had no intention of investing in the search. It was him who persisted, and the secretary beside Tony. Pepper said that all the expenses were borne by the Stark group, so he withstood the pressure and led a military team to persist in the search. But now, he is also a little desperate. Rhodey closed his eyes, sat on the bench, took out a cigarette from his arms and held it in his mouth, feeling the unique intoxicating feeling of nicotine in his lungs. At this time of fatigue, he needed nicotine to relieve himself. At this time, no one came to disturb him. I don't know how much time has passed, but I'm about to finish smoking a cigarette. Suddenly, Roddy suddenly felt a sense of violation. This sense of violation made him, a veteran warrior, react immediately. He opened his eyes immediately and pulled out the tactical leg strap. Pistol pointed forward. The moment he opened his eyes, he knew where the sense of dissonance came from. It turned out that a graceful figure appeared in his camp at some time, and he was still looking at the map of the Middle East on his computer that marked the search area. He has burgundy 2.9 slightly curly short hair, and is wearing a short-sleeved vest, tight combat pants and white shoes. Although he didn't see her face, the tall and graceful back made him sure that she must be a very beautiful woman. It's just that it shouldn't appear at this time and in this place. Rhodey frowned. Seeing that the other party didn't seem to be turning around, he warned, if I were you, then you should turn around immediately and tell Colonel Rhodey who you are and why you came to this place. Maybe I we may consider not arresting you. In the Middle East, where warlords fight, anyone can be a killer or self-destructor. Even if it is a woman, he does not dare to look down upon her. Facing Colonel Rhodey's gun, the woman turned around, her beautiful face full of exotic charm. Charming and mature, but with a completely opposite sense of cleanliness. The combination of the two has an indescribable charm. The green pupils are like gems, as if they are full of emotion, making people feel hot just by looking at them. Lou O'Degan swore that any man would be captured instantly when he saw the woman in front of him. Because he was stunned for the first time. This was very fatal for a soldier. Fortunately, Rhodey also immediately suppressed the fire in his heart, tightened his grip on the pistol and pointed it at the woman's eyebrows. He said, Who are you? How did you break in? This is a military camp. Even if there are not many soldiers outside, it is definitely not something that ordinary people can break in. Nice to meet you, Colonel Roddy. The woman's red lips rose. She was not afraid of the gun. Instead, she whispered softly, We are not enemies, and I don't think the thing in your hand can pose a threat to me. Yeah, Rhodey looked calm and disdainful on the surface, but in fact he began to sweat on his forehead. Because, he discovered that this woman might not be telling lies. Although this woman was beautiful, it made him feel as if he was facing an extremely terrifying monster, with a beautiful human skin, but a ferocious beast inside. Just looking at those beautiful green pupils, he felt a sense of fear rising up in his heart. This sense of fear, Colonel Roddy has almost lost his fighting spirit. It's terrible. The purpose of my visit is the same as yours, and I would like to thank you for your help. The woman didn't take action. She turned around and walked out of the camp. Roddy moved his gun and watched the woman leave, but he just didn't have the courage to pull the trigger. At the last moment of the woman's departure, she left a message. By the way, Colonel Roddy, I think you won't mind if I borrow one of your cars. The woman's graceful figure completely disappeared in the dazzling white light outside. It wasn't until the familiar crackling sound of the engine of the military vehicle outside was heard, and the sound gradually calmed down completely. Roddy, who was originally tense in spirit and muscles, finally relaxed, and he his whole body seemed as if he had been in a sweat steamer, his forehead was covered with sweat, and his back was soaked with cold sweat. He kept breathing heavily, and his eyes showed the fear of surviving the disaster. That woman, Roddy murmured in an incredible low voice. No one had ever been able to give him such a shock since he was a child, especially since he joined the army. There is no aggressive posture, no harsh tone or eyes. It can even be said that everything from posture, eyes to words is so gentle. 
But just like that, it gave him a feeling as if the god of death was watching him. It made his heart tremble, made him afraid. Roddy had a hunch that just as the woman said, the weapon he had always trusted would not have any effect on the woman. Even if she wanted to kill him, he would not even have the courage to resist. This is absolutely crazy. What on earth did I meet just now? Rody walked out of the camp with that kind of shock and fear. When he saw the outside, a complicated look flashed across his face. Because, outside the camp, some soldiers were patrolling and some were sorting equipment, but they just it seemed that he didn't notice the woman driving away in a car grandly. Rodil was stunned on the spot. On the desert, a military open-top Hummer was running into the distance at high speed, with yellow sand rising up from behind the car. He was wearing a gray suit. Natasha, wearing a short vest, was driving a Hummer, holding the steering wheel with one hand and resting on the door with one hand. She only needed to wear sunglasses. She said this while driving the car. Well, that map can save us a lot of things, and I can use my knowledge, knowledge, and domineering power to find the remaining area. Don't worry, the scope of my current knowledge is much wider than you imagined. You are in heaven ready to support me. The military's reaction, we can ignore it. Natasha listened to Yelena's enthusiastic voice in the headset, her red lips raised in response, and she raised her head to look at the scorching sun in the sky. It was very hot and very scorching, but Natasha was not exposed to such direct sunlight. No reaction. After injecting the super soldier gene serum, her body strength increased tenfold. According to Liang, after injecting the gene serum, she perfected it even breaks through human genes. Two words, evolution. The most intuitive feeling is that in addition to the improvement of physical fitness, there is also adaptability. The body will automatically adjust itself adaptively in various harsh environments. Even if it is now faced with three in the 40 degree high temperature environment, she did not feel the burning sensation or the feeling of her skin being burned by ultraviolet rays. In addition, it was the enhancement of the knowledge and color domineering. Maybe she has talent in this area, except for Wanda, her knowledge and color domineering, its strength is far greater than that of others, and it can also use the power of sight to eliminate its own aura and even affect the vision, hearing and other senses of the people around it. Therefore, she can enter the military camp openly and drive away the Humvee, but the soldiers seem to have not seen it. The same. The observation color hockey can sense the breath, and sense the location and number of objects outside the field of vision. The range varies from person to person. Her observation color can even spread to more than 10 kilometers away. It is simply a moving humanoid radar. Others in the Middle East it occupies an astonishingly large area, and Roddy spent several months searching a large area, which saved her a lot of trouble. Driving along, Natasha opened up her sights and sounds. Well, 45 degrees and 13 kilometers to the east, the density of people seems to be a gathering place, the atmosphere is peaceful, and the people. 60 degrees and 12 kilometers to the west, the atmosphere is peaceful and the people. 30 degrees and 8 kilometers away to the south, there are few people, impetuous atmosphere, and small-scale armed forces. Um, after sifting through the sights and sounds, I don't know how long it had passed. Finally, Natasha's sights and sounds suddenly sensed a large crowd. Their aura was full of cruelty, like bloodthirsty wild dogs. The most important thing is that she she felt two different auras, one of which was extremely depressed. Natasha's eyes lit up. Yelena, I think I should have found it. Finally found it. I'll come over now. In the dark cave, Tony Stark, who had disappeared for several months, was wearing a gray dusty bar vest, lying on a wooden board, staring blankly at the only small window in the opposite corner that could diffuse light. He could no longer remember how many days and sleepless nights he had spent here. From the very beginning, he was holding a battery to make a living, then he became decadent, then he was forced to make a new type of weapon, the Jericho missile, and finally he was encouraged by the old guy named Ethan, determined to use his wisdom to escape from here. In the corner not far away, there stood a tall thing covered by a rag. It would be the only thing that could help Tony Stark escape. Tony's chest kept rising and falling, and he could feel that his life force was weakening. Every night, the pain in his chest would wake him up from his sleep several times. His eyes were unfocused and his mind was empty of everything. Not far away, Ethan, with gray hair on his temples and glasses, was sitting in front of the oven, brewing low-quality coffee. 
Except for the chaotic noise outside, this place seemed relatively quiet and harmonious, noisy. Tony Stark was still in a daze when he suddenly felt something was wrong. He sat up from the board suddenly and looked at Ethan in surprise. The latter stood up at some point and happened to be looking at Tony with the same eyes. What's going on outside? I don't know, but this is where those guys gather, and the armed force is very large, so there shouldn't be any accidents, right? Ethan shook his head and said he didn't know. Tony frowned and turned to look at the big guy in the corner who was covered by a cloth. It would take about a week to complete the thing, and he didn't want anything to happen in the middle. Boom, ta, ta, ta. At this time, an explosion resounded throughout the cave. Not only that, dense gunfire and roars that Tony could not understand kept coming. The explosion shook the cave, and Tony and Yi at this time, Sen realized that there was another group of people who were exchanging fire with the terrorists. Tony was a little impatient. He didn't know who that group of people was. If they were from the US military, that would be fine, but if they were someone he didn't know, it would undoubtedly disrupt his escape plan. Ethan leaned against the metal door and listened carefully. He could understand the language of the terrorists, and tried his best to collect information from the screams of the terrorists from the explosions and gunshots. What did you hear? It seems that someone is attacking this ghost place. From what they said, it seems that there is only one person on the other side. What kind of devil is that? Ethan had a question mark on his face. Why did he feel like he heard wrong? A person. The devil. Tony's haggard face immediately became a little ugly. He hated this situation of unknown danger. He could do nothing but pray to the god here and pray for that chance of life. He hated this feeling, and he swore that in the future, I will definitely not let myself fall into such a situation again. Boom. Explosions kept coming, and the whole cave shook more and more, and even gravel and dust were splashed on the walls. But this time was accompanied by a sound a shrill and desperate scream. Tony felt more and more uneasy. Ethan was lying on the metal door trying hard to get information, but a slightly magnetic and hoarse girl came into their ears. The gentleman who was climbing on the door, could you please step back? Ethan and Tony were stunned, and they looked at each other. The former hesitated and quickly took a few steps back. The next moment, there was a boom, and the iron door seemed to be torn off the wall by some terrifying force, and hit hard. On the opposite wall, it hit the ground and stirred up a burst of dust. Cold sweat broke out on the foreheads of Tony and the two of them. What is this? Is there a monster? The dust was blown away by a breeze, and a graceful figure walked in from the transfer, with a delicate face, short burgundy slightly curly hair, and a gray vest. It was Natasha. Looking into Tony's eyes, he hadn't seen a woman in months. I'm going to stare out. Only Ethan can still maintain some sense at his old age. Lady, are you here to kill him or to save him? I think it's the latter. Natasha held up her slightly curly short hair, and her every frown and smile were full of charm. Tony immediately came over and said in a very gentlemanly tone, Wow, I think it is possible to be saved by a beautiful lady. Best day in months. Quote dot. Aha, Natasha looked at this talkative guy with a half smile but said, if I were the one who killed you, I'm afraid you wouldn't say that. Ha, huh, I don't believe that a beautiful woman like you would become a killer. Tony shrugged, with an expression that said I am willing to die in your hands. Natasha shook her head, turned and walked towards the door. She took two steps and tilted her face slightly, and said softly, follow me. Let me go. Um, it seems like there's still fighting outside. Tony didn't dare to talk nonsense at this time, so he stretched out his finger and pointed at the skylight behind him. Don't worry, they're just a bunch of fish. Natasha said lightly and walked away, leaving Tony and Ethan to look at each other and make eye contact. Can't you follow? I listen to you. That follow. I feel so too. Nords, after a fleeting eye contact, Tony and Ethan also followed closely mainly because the fate of the nearly shattered metal door on the ground was still vivid in their minds, and Tony was also afraid this woman gave herself a blow to crack her skull. With excitement and anxiety, Tony and Ethan cautiously left here. When they went out, they saw corpses left behind in the winding passages in the cave, as well as densely packed single holes on the walls. After a cursory look, the faces of the corpses were full of horror and despair. The corpses were in terrible shape, as if they had been hit by a dump truck. 
There were dents and broken limbs all over the ground. The picture was very bloody. Was this done by that woman? Tony suddenly felt that he was seeking death with his talk before. I'm Tony Stark, and I'm panicking right now. I saw a very beautiful woman before. I could have sworn that I had seen beauties of this level before, so I couldn't help but be stunned for a moment, but I didn't expect that this woman was a powerful woman, a terrorist with one punch. I'm so scared now. Billionaire Tony Stark and his doctor Ethan walked tremblingly out of the cave. Outside, the sound of gunfire and explosions grew quieter. All the way around the corner, the two of them were holding weapons, looking around and walking, and finally reached the outside of the cave. Tony curled up and leaned against the wall, looking outside. The dazzling sunlight poured in, making Tony feel uncomfortable and subconsciously raised his hands to cover his eyes, and half closed his eyes. He waited until he fully adapted to the light before opening his eyes. But when he saw the scene outside, he immediately leaned back and his eyes widened. This is the most unforgettable scene that Tony has ever seen in his life. What a bloody scene it was. This area is basin-shaped, with yellow sand all over it. The small space outside the cave is surrounded by rock walls, and many 257 machine guns are deployed from a high position. Muzzle. There is only one entrance from the outside. But in this small area, there were densely packed corpses lying on the ground, with a drop of blood flowing. The surrounding weapons and ammunition boxes, tents, etc. had turned into flames and burned blazingly. Among the corpses on the ground, that graceful and beautiful woman stood among them, holding a bald man wearing a terrorist's unique camouflage uniform in her slender jade hands. This man's bald head was covered with blood, and his whole body was completely limp. Tony recognized the bald man as the leader of the group of terrorists who had asked him to build the Jericho missiles. The bald man's breath was weak, and he lowered his head and murmured in a low voice, as if he was cursing. The woman's back now looked more like a terrifying death figure to Tony. The breeze blew through the burgundy curls. The woman said softly with a hint of laziness, I can feel the breath of innocent souls on you, you deserve to die. After saying that, she threw it away. Bang! The bald leader was like a cannonball, hitting the rock wall in the distance, and his entire body was embedded in it. His body was twisted into a human shape, and blood was constantly flowing. The man twitched and became completely silent. Tony and Ethan gulped when they saw this scene, their faces full of nervousness. Scared, isn't this woman a monster in human skin? The woman turned slightly, looked at Tony and the two useless men with a perfect profile, and said with a puzzled tone, you seem to be thinking about something bad. No, no, not at all. The two people immediately stood up straight as if they were electrocuted and waved their hands quickly. That's fine, follow me. Natasha's seductive eyes blinked, and she walked out with her slender legs. When she passed several missile launchers that hit the Jericho missile, she kicked them together. After receiving the ammunition from a he took out a time bomb from the box, set the time, and threw it on the missile launcher. When Tony and Ethan saw this, they immediately quickened their pace and followed. When they walked outside the narrow basin cave, they saw a yellow field in front of them. In addition to a Humvee parked on the sand, there was also a black fighter plane. The door of the fighter plane had been opened, the metal stairs spread down, and Natasha walked straight up. Tony and Ethan grimaced. If possible, the two hoped to leave in a Hummer rather than take a plane. However, it was obvious that they had no choice but to not fear that they would end up like the terrorist leader, CCFI. The two walked down the stairs into the cabin, to Tony's surprise, the cabin was different from other fighter jets or transport planes. This plane was more like a small private plane. There were no weapons inside, and the decoration was very luxurious and warm. We even saw hand-painted pictures on the walls of the cabin. Animal print. Natasha sat on the lounge seat, leaning on the soft backrest, crossing her legs, looking lazy and elegant. Seeing two useless men timidly walking up, she tapped her chin, signaling to sit down. The two of them also sat down on the opposite seats obediently. Behind the back of the seat was the driver's seat. Yelena, who was wearing a pair of headphones in the driver's seat, turned her head and took a look, and immediately said, wow, that guy is the famous Tony Stark. Now he looks more like a homeless person. With Tony's temper, he instinctively wanted to retort and taunt her back, but he glanced at Natasha and swallowed the words in his mouth. 
so angry, he, Tony Wen had Stark ever had a moment like this. Natasha stretched out her hand and knocked the protruding little head, and said angrily, if you were kidnapped here for a few months, you would also become a homeless girl. Cut, Yelena touched the part of her head that had been shot and looked unhappy, but in her heart she was enjoying this intimate sisterly interaction. But she can't express her personality. Okay, it's time for us to go. Wang, Yelena piloted the plane and started it. The plane automatically retracted the support frame and stairs and took off vertically. Yelena's driving skills were very good. There was every slight fluctuation during takeoff. Boom, an explosion came from outside the plane, and a huge mushroom cloud covered the cave. The basin was completely flattened, and all traces were engulfed in the flames of the explosion. Tony felt much more relaxed, and then focused on the plane. As the most outstanding scientist of this century, after a little observation, he could it was discovered that this plane contained very advanced technology. The people who built this plane were very high level. Of course, some shortcomings could also be seen. Just when Tony Stark was thinking about the plane, two bottles of frozen juice appeared in front of him, interrupting his thoughts. Looking up, it turned out that Natasha took out the juice from the small refrigerator next to the seat and handed it to them. For several months, in the hot weather in the Middle East, those terrorists would not give it to Tony and Ethan specifically. How much food and treatment have you prepared? Now that a glass of frozen juice was in front of them, Tony and Ethan's eyes lit up, and they quickly took it without forgetting to say thank you. Gulu, Gulu, he couldn't wait to open the bottle cap and drank half of the bottle in one gulp. The extreme frost spread from his throat to his stomach. The coolness made Tony and Ethan shiver. That feeling of being caught in the rain is so wonderful. Tony even believed that no matter how many delicacies he had eaten from five-star chefs in the past, they could not be as good as this bottle of frozen juice. Burning bodies are cooled. Tony relaxed, squinting his eyes slightly with joy on his face. Natasha didn't laugh when she saw the two people's performance. Compared to Tony, she had encountered worse environments than this. Instead, she raised her thin eyebrows and looked at the thing on Tony's chest that was emitting a faint blue light. Shen Wen's Baki scanned the fragments inside this guy's body that were absorbed on this thing. She immediately thought of the origin of this thing and said in admiration, you are really a genius. In that kind of environment, you actually built a miniature arc reactor. I believe this is the only guy in the world who can do it. Although this guy is arrogant and arrogant, and empties everything, it has to be said that his wisdom can indeed support him in all this. No matter how talented you are, there will be times when you fall into despair. Tony closed the lid, holding the juice in his hand, and said bitterly. The cave experience in the past few months has changed his personality. He realized that geniuses and billionaires, in front of those cruel terrorists, it's just prey. If he hadn't been needed to make the Jericho missile, maybe he would have been killed long ago, dumped in the desert and dried as a mummy. Military escorts were ineffective, and external forces could not completely guarantee safety. He can only rely on himself, and Tony also knows that he does not have so-called superpowers, nor does he have the strength and speed of a woman like the monster in front of him. But he has his own wisdom and money-making abilities that surpass anyone else. When thinking of being in the cave, he can only rely on himself. Build out the big guy and the little guy on the chest. Maybe, Tony's mind immediately emerged with dense data graphs. But obviously now is not the time to think about this. Tony is more concerned about why the two women in front of him came to save him. He adjusted his expression, looked at Natasha seriously and asked, So, I am very grateful to you for coming to save me, and I am also very grateful for this bottle of juice. So, who sent you? My name is Natasha. As for who we are, you don't need to know, but we have no ill intentions towards you, and saving you is just a deal. Trade, that's right, to save you, we need that big guy from Stark Group. Arc reactor. That's right. Natasha nodded. I know you won't give us the core technical drawings of that thing, so we need the finished product. The energy provided by that thing is much greater than you think, and it can even provide power to the entire New York for half a year. Tony said calmly. Natasha saw through Tony's temptation and smiled, so we need this thing. I need its stable energy supply to support a big guy. I'm curious what this big guy is. That's all I can say. Tony, if you really want to know, then there's a reason you have to join us. 
Natasha looked at Tony with a half smile. Sure enough, Tony immediately changed his face and waved his hand. Forget it then, how many do you need? We need five for the first batch, and one for each year thereafter. Wow, that's a lot of money. The first batch is free, and we can spend money to buy it every subsequent year. Natasha said without a doubt. Although Natasha had a strong attitude, Tony did not become angry. After all, the origin of the woman in front of him was mysterious, but at least she saved him from the sea of misery. Tony can still do it. A little, thinking, his eyes flickered and he didn't answer immediately. For a moment, the atmosphere became silent. Old God Ethan was leaning on the chair, taking a sip from the juice bottle from time to time. He didn't care about these things. He just seemed to think of something. His eyes were a little sad. Here, after Tony thought about it, he stared at Natasha's pretty face that brought disaster to the country and the people, and said softly, if I can provide the arc reactor for free, can I gain your friendship? Ha, huh, Tony's words were beyond Natasha's expectation. She looked at the serious-faced man in front of her in surprise, it's really strange that a person like you would say such a thing. Tony Stark's character profile of Natasha has already been low. Because this guy's profile is too easy. He is proud and domineering, flamboyant, high profile, arrogant, and self-centered without caring about other people. He is very wary of anyone and anything in the outside world. He can be generous, but such a person must gain his approval and become his true friend. This time, the experience in the cave will make Tony change some of his personality. At least, he will be more prepared in terms of safety. Natasha knows that although she saved this guy, her identity is mysterious after all. Even if she talks about saving it openly he was just a one-time deal, but it was absolutely impossible for Tony to trust her. She even believed that although this guy might honestly provide the arc reactor and would not reveal his identity to the outside world or the military, he would definitely do it secretly. But, Tony made a very risky decision that was beyond her expectation. From his own perspective, he took the opportunity to gain friendship with a group of mysterious organizations, and they were by no means ordinary members of the organization. So, is what made Tony make this decision. Natasha has a top-notch IQ. Taking Tony as the perspective and the environment is the reason, she can see the other person's thoughts. In essence, she is still uneasy. She was suddenly kidnapped, and the military escort's route of action was revealed. The Jericho missiles secretly developed and provided to the military appeared in the hands of a group of terrorists. It was obvious that there was a traitor in the Stark group, and his status was so high that Tony guessed someone he didn't want to think about. And the combat power displayed by Natasha proves that there are too many extraordinary superhumans in this world. Chapter 91 Tony felt that he would not be able to guarantee safety even if he went back, so before he needed to build a security defense network himself, he brought in someone from another party who could provide security. Natasha and even the so-called organization behind it are obviously the best choice. At the very least, Natasha clearly wanted the arc reactor, and before delivering her speech, she certainly would not let anything happen to Tony, the owner of the core technology of the arc reactor. This is a natural ally. Of course, it is not ruled out that Natasha has other intentions. Even so, if Natasha doesn't take action against Tony now, she won't do it in a short time. So Tony is betting, and he has a high probability of winning. Tony was able to understand the situation in a matter of seconds, a wisdom Natasha recognized. I also gained some new insights into this guy's profiling data. You are very smart. After Natasha pondered for a moment, she changed the topic, so what do you need us to do? Ha, huh, these words made Tony feel a little more relaxed. He was right in the first stage of his bet. Then his eyes were focused and he said solemnly, I will go back and announce the closure of the arms department. The Stark group will fall into a period of turmoil in a short period of time. During this period of turmoil, anyone may take action against me or my people. Ordinary people, you don't have to worry about it, but you want us to guard against people like me. Natasha raised her red lips and took over the words. Yes, I am confident in general business wars and struggles, but I am not confident in people like you. Tony readily admitted. Without Natasha, he was not worried about his safety. As a director of Stark Group and a billionaire, his security force was not just his trusted fat bodyguard happy. Tucker Group, 
if ordinary people want to take action against him, it is impossible to succeed. But guys with various powers give him a headache. Time. Natasha looked at Tony with bright eyes. Half a year. Too long, impossible. Natasha immediately denied. Then three months. Tony immediately folded. Three months is enough for him to smash that thing out. By then, he will have enough ability to protect himself. Can he be confident enough to solve it in three months? Natasha took a moment thinking about it. Three months is not a long time, and it is still in New York, so it is not a big problem, so she nodded and agreed. Okay. We will keep an eye on you secretly. Thank you. After returning, Stark will deliver the first arc reactor, which will take time to assemble. Tony smiled, but in his heart, he was more curious about the woman in front of him and the power behind it. How powerful she must be to have such confidence. Not long after, Tony finally returned to New York. There is no doubt that Tony's return immediately caused an uproar across the United States, and major media rushed to New York to seek big news from Tony Stark. Everyone was curious about what happened to the billionaire during the kidnapping. Who was it? Rescued him. Of course, it was not just the news media, but many institutions, people and departments with interests involved in the Stark group. All of them were concerned. Some people even took action. But unexpectedly, Tony's as soon as Tucker returned to New York, he opened a press conference and made a big one. At the Stark Group press conference, Tony Stark solemnly announced. From now on, Stark Group will close its arms department and will no longer be involved in the field of arms. Wow, when reporters from the major media below heard Tony Stark's words, they immediately caused an uproar. Every reporter suddenly stood up from their seats, took the microphone and rushed to the news desk in front, screaming at the top of their lungs, asked loudly. Mr. Stark, why are you allowed to make such a decision? Does the Stark Group's board of directors agree? Mr. Stark, will closing the arms department cause irreversible harm to the future of the Stark Group? Mr. Stark, the Stark Group has lost the arms market. Will it transform into other areas? Was it because of the kidnapping experience that made you make this decision? Mr. Stark, facing the excited and fanatical reporters, Tony Stark wore a suit and sunglasses and did not say anything further, because his reasons for closing the arms department had already been explained at the press conference, but these reporters and the world would not believe it, but Tony wouldn't care. He turned and left, followed by his good friend Colonel Roddy, his bodyguard Happy, and his blonde secretary Pepper. Only one bald white man, Odaiba, another member of the board of directors of Stark Group, was left. He suppressed his anger and faked a smile while hurriedly explaining to the reporters. Unfortunately, the closure of the arms department is imperative. As the director of Stark Group, Tony has such authority. Behind the reporters, a mysterious woman wearing a black windbreaker, sunglasses, and burgundy curly hair sat on a chair, watching the farce and the man on the news desk who was called the father of the Stark Group, man. Her red lips raised slightly, and she murmured in a voice that only she could hear. Is it really you? Although it is well concealed, it is really interesting, the struggle between wealthy families, hypocrisy, cunning, and bloody. It's so boring. In the Stark group office, Odaiba, a bald white man with a macho physique, angrily swept away all the documents and decorations on the desk in front of him. He was like an angry bull, with his hands on the desk and his chest rising and falling 3.3, face distorted, eyes full of bloodshot eyes. Tony Stark, I have tolerated your willfulness over and over again, but you have disappointed me so much. You are as arrogant as your father. I won't allow you to, father and son, to ruin all my hard work. You should be buried in that place. Originally, I didn't want to do it myself, but you forced me to do it. The voice full of murderous intent resounded in the office. Odaiba looked at the photo with Tony on the table that was luckily not swept down, his eyes were full of coldness. Those stupid and arrogant guys, you are too fool. Outside a cafe on the street in New York, Liang was wearing a white shirt and sunglasses, sitting on a chair drinking coffee and scrolling through his mobile phone. It is worth mentioning that there was an unopened cup of coffee on the table opposite. His tall figure and unusual temperament attracted the attention of a group of girls drinking coffee nearby. Not far away, under the billboard, there was a police car, and two policemen in police uniforms were chatting and drinking coffee. After a while, the New York Classic Project was staged. Clatter. 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 
On a street not far away, there was suddenly dense gunshots and screams. The crowd over there immediately panicked and ran wildly. The two police officers who drank coffee immediately threw the coffee aside into the trash can, quickly got into the police car, blew their sirens and started driving towards the starting point. Li Ang then put down his phone and looked over there. Well, it was a classic bank robbery. And they are still a gang of gangsters and robbers, so why not 23? Several gang members from Hell's Kitchen jointly committed the crime because they were addicted to drugs and lacked money. Ask him how he knew. Asking means that the eyes of inside are always sharp, but with just one look, a person's panties will be seen through. After admiring the heroic figures of these robbers for a moment, Liang didn't even move, just pretending to be watching a live performance in New York. As for helping, but stop making trouble, he never planned to be a superhero, not to mention that the bank was still being robbed and the capitalists were the ones who suffered losses. It would be good if he didn't help with the wool harvesting. However, the gun battle scene was a bit too big, and the gangsters used heavy firepower, fearing that they might have lost their minds. As a result, the police station deployed a large number of police personnel. The nearby police were fully armed and bullets were flying. Several police cars were even blown up. On the contrary, on their side, those who should drink coffee drink coffee and at most talk about it. It seems that they are completely accustomed to it. What a New York City with simple folk customs. While Liang was admiring it, he suddenly seemed to notice something. He suddenly turned his head and looked at the top of another street. He saw a guy wearing a red and blue tights and a hat shooting spider silk on top of the tall building. Wandering flew quickly towards the shooting point. As the man continued to approach, the citizens who spotted him below began to exclaim. Look, it's Spider Boy. It's that bug again. Last time he subdued a robber and almost destroyed my store. It's Spider-Man, Mom, look, he's gone to stop crime. Yo-ho. As if hearing the comments of the citizens below, the young Spider-Man wandered around the high-rise building and roared with excitement like Tarzan. Finally, he jumped down from a height of tens of meters and headed towards the bank robbers. Falling away. If you have money, you rely on technology, if you don't have money, you rely on mutation. As the leader of the latter type, Spider-Man's strength is simply terrifying in front of humans. His arm strength is tens of tons, he can outrun a sports car, and he also has a spider sense. A level of skills. Those robbers were no match at all. They were easily eliminated in three to five and tied into a shape. The police could only watch in displeasure as Spider-Man talked about being a good neighbor to New York citizens while firing. Spider Silk Yo-Yo. That flamboyant look almost made several younger policemen raise their hands and shoot. The appearance of Spider-Man increased the casualty rate and arrest rate of the policemen, but at the same time it also made the policemen's existence the meaning is reduced. You must know that the contradiction between the police and the people has been increasingly intensified, and there were even voices asking Congress to reduce funding for the police. There is no doubt that Spider-Man is not only slapping the police in the face, but also extremely it will probably lead to a great reduction in the income of the police. This is why the police are extremely unhappy with Spider-Man. Of course, this has nothing to do with Liang. He just noticed that when the little spider fought, he was much stronger than in the previous movie. He did not face ordinary criminals have had classic scenes of being knocked down. Think about it. Although Spider-Man's own fighting skills are not outstanding, he has the skill of spider reaction, coupled with powerful physical instincts. He has already made it possible for him to respond to any attack. The most correct attack reaction. Ordinary people can't hurt Spider-Man even if they shoot at close range. Not bad, Peter Parker. Leon has a very good sense of the little spider. Marvel's final conscience is not just for nothing. At least this Spider-Man is not the mentally retarded kid in the future who creates three parallel universes in the same frame. But this little spider is very cool now. In fact, the future crisis is not small. The biggest crisis is the so-called successor family, the Moreland family. One of the characteristics of this family is that it specializes in absorbing the power of the spider totem on Spider-Man. Because of a prophecy passed down in the family, after saying that one day the successor family would be destroyed by Spider-Man, this family began to hunt Spider-Man in various dimensions of the universe and suck their souls, thus gradually becoming stronger. As for this family, it is actually not weak and powerful. 
Spider-Man, Captain of the Universe, was defeated. Although 160 there are reasons for restraint. But these are things for later. Li Ang's attention is not on these guys, for him, are also a group of walking gene pools. However, Spider-Man has great potential. Since he plans to establish his own country, Spider-Man is certainly within his consideration range. As for whether he will absorb it, Li Ang still plans to consider it. Bank robbery after the drama ended, the nearby streets became quiet again. Li Ang picked up the coffee and just took a sip. Not far away, a graceful woman wearing a black trench coat and sunglasses came over. She sat on the chair opposite Li Ang. The iconic burgundy color her curly hair moved gently in the wind, and her sunglasses naturally could not hide her beautiful face, which also made the other girls nearby who mustered up the courage to make friends sigh in disappointment. Natasha glanced around, and with those the girls who looked over secretly looked at Liang with half-smiling smiles. It seems that my appearance has disappointed many girls. They will forget when they look back. Liang looked at the big goblin without changing his expression. Natasha didn't know whether this was indeed a characteristic of girls. Did you fall in love with that little spider just now? Natasha was not teasing Liang, but changed the subject. Apparently she had also noticed the robbery by the bank robber just now. Li Ang shook his head slightly, that kid is different from us. As he said, he is not interested in absorbing the little spider for the time being because of his experience and personality. Whether it is Leon, Natasha, or Wanda, everyone has one thing in common, that is, a tragic past. Everyone has a tragic past when they were very young. You know the darkness of this world. For this reason, everyone, with Li Ang as the center, only lives for themselves and this family. They are kind-hearted in nature. Even if they have power beyond what ordinary people can have in their lives, they will not go out of your way to express your power unscrupulously and show your kindness when facing ordinary people. But similarly, when facing the enemy, as long as they are labeled as enemies, no matter who the opponent is, regardless of man, woman, age, or child, they will all be killed because all they care about is they and their families. They have lost family members before, so they care more about the relationship between family members than ordinary people. Anyone who wants to destroy will tear off the coat of kindness and reveal his ferocity, even if it is stained with blood. But Little Spider is different, he is too kind, so kind that after the symbiosis of venom, the darkness in his heart is amplified, and he just asks his boss to increase his salary and go dancing outside in the street. The difference in three concepts determines the difference between Little Spider and them he is not a person who runs on the track. Therefore, he will consider absorbing Spider-Man, but even if he does, it will have to wait until Spider-Man encounters a fatal crisis. Impressive little guy. Natasha also noticed it, and then looked at the phone on Leon's desk. The picture that lit up was exactly what Tony Stark said at the press conference. You saw it. Aha, you don't seem surprised that he would do this. I wouldn't be surprised at what kind of things a person who has been kidnapped and has not seen the light of day for several months returns to human society. Li Ang shook his head with a chuckle. So, he agreed to our deal. Well, he used all the subsequent arc reactors as free chips in exchange for our friendship and secretly guarded him for three months. Like the things he can do, it seems that he has a lot of interest in you or us. Leon immediately understood Tony's thoughts. Indeed, so I agreed. Then I can only trouble you. Leon chuckled. Natasha rolled her eyes and said angrily, You are really an unscrupulous capitalist. Maybe I should also find a group of robbers to rob you. Then the robber you were looking for is stronger. Leon said nonchalantly. Natasha glared at Leon hatefully, but then frowned and asked, We have made a deal, what are you going to do with Wanda and Pietro? Wanda and Pietro have come out of the gloom in the past few years, but that doesn't mean they have given up on the idea of revenge against Tony. When Leon came to New York, the twins were already thinking about revenge against Tony. But they didn't expect that the other party would be just kidnapped. Now, they have made a deal with Tony. Natasha knows very well that because of Leon, even if the twins hate Tony, they will not hesitate to give up revenge. But Natasha also knows better that Leon will not do this for these reasons. The twins were wrong because of something. What would Leon do? Natasha was very curious. I will not wrong my family. If Wanda and Pietro want revenge, I will not stop them. 
And I believe that Wanda will get back what we need when she takes revenge. Lee. Aang shrugged. It all depends on what she thinks. It's really your style. Natasha raised her red lips. Leon's character is too distinct. Not to mention other things, the thoughts of this family always make people feel warm and never disappoint. Natasha feels the same way and doesn't care about Tony. Who is he, a billionaire, a genius scientist? If Wanda wants revenge, she can break the other person's hands and feet without any scruples and throw them in front of Wanda. That dude should be doing something in three months. In three months, what will he do to give him the confidence to face any crisis or conspiracy? What do you think? Li Ang raised his eyebrows. A piece of armor. In the cave, I saw what he built. It's hard to imagine that under those conditions and environment, he built that big thing and shrunk the arc reactor. He is indeed a genius. Tony thought that when Natasha was rescuing him, Natasha didn't have enough to reach the corner. But in fact, before Natasha's body was greatly strengthened, she was a top spy, and she was best at visual capture and analysis. Although the things in the corner were covered, the wind and waves caused by her violently pulling open the iron door still revealed traces of the covering rags, which she immediately caught. It is easy to think of the arc reactor on Tony's chest as a power source. You can guess what that big guy is. So Natasha would praise Tony as a genius on the plane, which was actually a pun. Then let's see what the fate of that guy will be then. Li Ang picked up the coffee and took a sip, is it death or rebirth? Leon was also curious about what Wanda would choose. What path her future destiny would take. He began to look forward to it. Natasha slightly squinted her bright eyes. It was the first time she saw this guy look like this. It seems that the playboy is more important in his heart than he thought. Tony Stark, a small town in Texas has not many residents. It is not as prosperous as a big city, but it has the beauty of the Texas countryside. Shrubs, forest vegetation and rivers. Neatly decorated flower beds, cobblestone paths and buildings on both sides. On the grassland at the far end, ranch cowboys ride horses and graze. Everything seems so calm and peaceful. But if you think the people here are nice, you are wrong. When you piss off a guy, maybe the redneck will take out his thick and long shotgun and aim it at your balls. Egg, I'll give you a shot with a crazy smile. This is Texas, at least what Wanda and Pietro think, because they have encountered this kind of thing several times. Of course it is either a robbery or a robbery together. After all, Wanda has gradually opened up since she was a little girl, becoming more beautiful and sweet. But they often ignore one thing, that is, sometimes the more beautiful it is, the more dangerous it is, so there is no need for Sergei to take action, Wanda can do whatever she wants with just one look, the other person's will was tampered with on the spot, and he automatically found a place to commit suicide. In a restaurant in a small town, Wanda, Sergei, and Pietro were sitting and eating. But the restaurant had its own hanging TV broadcasting the news made the twins lose their appetite. Wanda and Pietro looked at the TV with cold eyes. Even Sergei frowned and said nothing. Tisk, kill him later. Pietro twisted his neck, with a look of displeasure on his face. Wanda's breathing was also a little heavy. Apparently seeing Tony's face reminded her of the tragic experience when she was 10 years old. The two of them were in a very unhappy mood. But just now at this time, the phone rang. Wanda took out her phone to answer the call, and Liang's voice came from the earphones. Wanda, hey, Leon. Wanda greeted softly. You should know this, right? Wanda glanced at Pietro and Sergei opposite, and said with a hint of coldness, that guy is back. It was me who asked Natasha to get him out. Li Ang's words did not make Wanda lose her mind. Years of getting along with her made her trust Li Ang very much. He was already her family, so she listened quietly. As expected, the two of them combined the Sky Fortress and the Arc Reactor with the Tony told him about the deal. After everything was explained, Li Ang's gentle voice continued. We all support your decision, Wanda. The tone paused and then continued. Oh, and Pietro. Across the way, Pietro curled his lips, really pretending that he couldn't hear. Leon, Wanda pursed her pink lips. Her original bad mood about Tony being alive was dispelled. What made her even more happy was that Leon was still treating herself and Pietro as always. But this is family. She took a deep breath after taking a breath, he whispered, we can let go. Wanda. However, before he finished speaking, 
he was interrupted by Liang on the other end, who said in a serious tone, Wanda, although we have never sworn to make a promise, I will always support you. A mere transaction does not mean anything. It's worth letting you give up revenge. Even compared to your bad mood for a day, it's not worth it. I just want to tell you that if you decide to take revenge, go ahead and do it. I get it, Leon. The communication between the two was just a brief taste. After hanging up the communication, the originally impetuous mood calmed down. Not only Wanda, but also Pietro. Wow, Texas food is really good. Seeing this, Sergei relaxed a lot. He immediately changed the subject. Pietro cut the steak with a knife and fork, and while rejecting the steak, he said, well, it tastes a little worse than what we cook. Although I say so, I can't control my eating at all. I can't help it. The experience during the homeless period and when I was dragged to do experiments was so unforgettable that I have always maintained very good habits when it comes to food, unless it is difficult to swallow. He will eat all the food seriously. On this point, the entire family members are the same. Okay, we followed the clues and found this place, but his position seems to have been moving. Could it be that he is avoiding us? The food in front of Wanda has been finished. She took out her tablet and put it on the table, saying with a headache. The reason the three of them came to Texas was because of the skeleton knight who was covered in flames and rode a ghost-faced Harley. But since leaving Houston finally, finding this guy was not smooth at all, because the other party seemed to have no clear route. In addition, most of the time he left at night, and the speed was very fast, so the three people's car could not keep up. Who knows, but this guy is really hard to be cool, he is so handsome. Pietro commented, and even Sergei nodded in agreement. After all, there is no boy who can wear black leather armor, leather pants, and a flaming skull. Riding a ghost-faced Harley through the night. Wanda rolled her eyes. She did not agree with the boy's weird aesthetics. Seeing Wanda's gaze, Pietro quickly lowered his head and ate the food. Sergei coughed dryly and made an analysis. Whether he is avoiding us or not, at least we can't analyze his route, and he is very fast. You can travel continuously through several cities in one night. This is really troublesome. I don't think it's possible to go back and fly over my home fighter. Wanda pondered slightly, glanced around, and lowered her voice. But I seem to feel something is wrong. Wrong. Wanda's words immediately aroused the alert of Pietro and Sergei. Wanda's own special ability, coupled with the powerful domineering power of knowledge, whenever she felt something was wrong, there must be something wrong somewhere. Even for the sake of caution, they will pay attention to it. Which one is wrong? Pietro asked. But Wanda shook her head. I can't tell, I feel a sense of violation. I feel that besides us, there is something else tracking that skeleton knife fang. Thing. Yi, because I feel that the other person may not be a human being. In addition, there should be another group of people, but I don't know who they are. That seems interesting, that guy has attracted a lot of people's attention. Pietro took the last piece of steak into his mouth and refused, wiped his mouth with a napkin, leaned on the chair and said with interest, we have a lot to play with. So what do we do now? We have to find a way to lock him down. Saragai tapped the table lightly with his index finger. What we fear most is that this guy is aimless, and we can't even wait and see. Pietro covered the back of his head with both hands and said helplessly. In fact, we don't need to be so anxious. Wanda's bright eyes flashed and she said softly, since we can't catch it, then we can slow down the pace and just chase behind. Wait until the last scene is performed, which is when we appear on the stage. Ha 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 ha, in a remote city in Texas, at night, the bright moon shines all over the city. However, the entire city has a darker tone, making the city look gloomy at night. But a wild laughter broke the tranquility of the city. Inside the abandoned factory, a middle-aged man wearing a black leather jacket and leather pants seemed to be in great pain and covering his head. His face was distorted, but wild laughter burst out from his mouth. On the body, wisps of sparks corroded the flesh and blood, and the human face and the skull face flickered from time to time. Finally, with a bang sound, blazing red flames burned on the head, and the whole body turned into a skeleton. The eyes of the skeleton were glowing with faint fire, like a messenger from hell. He twisted his neck and glanced at the chain hanging on the steel column of the ceiling beside him, as if he saw some suitable weapon. He suddenly stretched out his skeleton hand, 
grabbed the chain, and pulled hard. There was a crashing sound, and the chain was violently removed, and then it was waved to the shoulder, the chains wrapped around the body as if they were alive. After getting the weapon, the skeleton knight raised his eyes and looked in the distance. It sounded like a sound from hell. I smell sin. Just like a hunter eyeing his prey, the skeleton knight came to the classic Harley parked not far away. The terrifying skeleton fingers slowly brushed over the motorcycle. The raging flames of hell caused the motorcycle to begin to twist and change, and finally made an automatic movement. A ghost-faced motorcycle that looks like it was built by the devil. He sat on it with one foot. Rumble. The engine exploded like a wild beast roaring, and as the tires frantically rubbed against the ground, air and smoke emitted. Finally, the two tires began to emit sparks, and finally began to burn. Bang. As if a sonic explosion exploded and air waves exploded, the ghost-faced locomotive drove violently toward the outside of the factory. Along the way, the ground cracked, leaving a long line of fire. The speed keeps soaring, keeps soaring, along the road outside the factory, holding the handle with one hand and waving the chain with the other hand, running at high speed, leaving behind a series of wild laughter, vehicles parked along the street, street lights, the billboards seemed to be burned as the motorcycle passed by, and they all melted like candles. Even the stray cat evaporated and burned, leaving only a skeleton. The skeleton knight drove his ghost-faced motorcycle to wreak havoc on the city streets. He drove for an unknown amount of time, and finally, in a deserted and dark street in the city, he listened, because the skeleton knight had found his prey. These prey have strong bodies, like wild beasts, with golden hair spilling down their shoulders. Wearing a thin vest, veins appeared on the muscles, and there was a fierce and violent aura. The other one is a woman with blue skin all over her body. Her emerald green pupils are like a cat's eyes in the dark, full of ghostly feeling. Next to her, there was a young boy, with a few freckles visible on his rather immature face, and his face was full of rebelliousness. The leader, wearing a brown helmet, a brown cape, black armor and boots. His wrinkled face didn't make him look old, but instead showed a different kind of majesty and dominance from his eyes. Hey, that's cool. I like his outfit. Is this what we're looking for? The young man looked at the skeleton knight and twisted his neck, eager to give it a try. He is the skeleton knight from hell that has been rumored in Texas in recent days. The blue-skinned woman frowned and said uncertainly, is he really a mutant? A very interesting boy, Raven, whether he is a mutant or not, but he makes me very satisfied. The old man said softly. These four people were surprisingly the leader of the brotherhood headed by the old man, Magneto, Mystique Raven, Saber-toothed Tiger and Xavier. John, the mutant who is a student at the teenage mutant school. John may have an extremely irritable and unstable personality due to the influence of his abilities. He was dissatisfied that the teachers did not allow students to abuse their abilities. Until the striker incident, he met Magneto. Eric, after communicating with Magneto Eric, was influenced by his domineering attitude and the concept of mutant supremacy, so he ran away from school and joined Magneto and became a member of his brotherhood. This is also the reason why he joined the brotherhood. The first mission. Unexpectedly, the mission was to find and invite a flaming skeleton to join the Brotherhood. Needless to say, judging from John's character, the skeleton was indeed cool. Magneto walked with him everyone stepped forward and wanted to speak, but the skeleton knight spoke first. He sat on the motorcycle and pointed his skull index finger at Magneto. A voice sounded like it came from hell. You are guilty, blood-stained and innocent souls, you should go to hell. Boom. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw the skeleton knight directly taking off the entangled chains and flicking them. The chains burning with hellfire seemed to be like a poisonous snake reaching towards Magneto and the others. Magneto's eyes flashed. Cold. He is Magneto, and any metal can only surrender in front of him. In an instant, he activated his ability and wanted to control the chain, but the next moment, Magneto's cold eyes suddenly changed, and he found that he could not control it. That chain but the chain of burning flames has already hit. Fortunately, Magneto has experienced many battles. Even if it was unexpected, he still activated his ability in an instant. He stretched out his hand and saw the billboards on both sides of the road suddenly cracked. After breaking, the chain whizzed across and was inserted with precision, nailing it to the ground. 
Although the hellfire on the chain burned the billboard and began to melt, it still prevented the skeleton knife from taking out the chain for a while. Magneto sometimes lightly clenched his fist. Boom. In an instant, the entire highway space seemed to be distorted. The vehicles parked on both sides, street lamps, and all metal objects were instantly decomposed into countless dense metal particles. Those metal particles the combination started, and the accompanying Magneto suddenly turned his fists into palms and pressed down. The metal particles turned into spears, roaring like a rainstorm and attacking the skeleton knight. Boom, 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 not far away, on the rooftop of a small bungalow, under the moonlight, three figures could be seen silently watching the skeleton knight imprisoned on the street ahead by metal spears. That beautiful hair and the red coat and vest. Surprisingly, it is the witch lady, Ms. Wanda. Standing next to them were naturally Pietro and Sergei. This guy only appears at night. Thanks to us hacking the surveillance networks of several nearby cities, otherwise it would be really hard to find this guy. Pietro crossed his arms, the hem of his coat swaying in the wind. It sounds simple, but in fact it is really difficult to do. Natasha gave a wave of remote help. Otherwise, he would have to hack several cities in a row. The technology of the three of them cannot be used to monitor the network. Don't look at how easy it is to hack a surveillance network in the movie, but in fact the protection center of the city surveillance network system is quite strict. The United States is famous as the Matrix, it leads the world in the field of network monitoring. A lot of manpower, material and financial resources have been invested, which is in a strategic sense. And a network security department has been established to absorb the world's top network experts and design a special firewall. But there is no way, who can meet an expert in this field? Natasha does not need to be too good at finding network vulnerabilities. She directly bypassed the firewall and did not attack directly. Instead, she relied on this system to open a small backdoor, a network backdoor, can be regarded as a major feature of the United States. After all, the FBI and CIA departments happen to do some irregular things, and the methods used are of course not visible to the public. Leaving a backdoor is naturally an unwritten tacit understanding among all parties. In order to make it easier for people to use the backdoor. In this way, the three of them were able to find the skeleton knight quickly. But they didn't expect, just like Wanda felt before, they didn't expect Magneto, the leader of the Brotherhood of Mutants, to also be looking for this guy. Obviously also attracted by this skeleton knight. By the way, this guy has turned into a skeleton, how can we draw blood from this guy? Pietro seemed to have thought of something and said with a grimace. Wanda rolled her eyes and was too lazy to pay attention to this idiot. Sergei looked at the street below, wrinkled by the spear's nail to the ground and trapping the skeleton knight. He frowned and said, he gives me a very bad feeling. He doesn't look like a creature on earth. Is he a mutant? No, Wanda's bright eyes flashed red. From her perspective, she saw that the skeleton knight had two different souls, one was a human soul, and the other seemed to come from another place, full of violence. He is a human, also from hell. Hell, there is an extreme coincidence between this person and the time and place where Mephisto appeared. Wanda analyzed. Pietro and Sergei suddenly realized it. The former said in a deep voice, he has a direct connection with Mephisto. Indeed, when I came to Texas two days ago, I happened to meet Mephisto and even had a fight. It turned out that this skeleton knight was also in Texas. He appeared at the right time and had the soul of hell in him. The probability of coincidence is infinitely close. Yu Ling. Sergei rubbed his chin with his fingers, thoughtfully, Mephisto still doesn't give up on the earth, is he driving a nail into the earth? Mephisto couldn't come to earth directly anyway. Pietro said indifferently. We just need to get this guy's blood. Wanda nodded in agreement. They don't have the time to worry about these things. As long as it doesn't affect them, it doesn't matter what Mephisto does. Um, the guy resisted. Pietro raised his eyebrows. He saw the skeleton knight below who was trapped on the ground by metal spears. There were blazing flames in his eyes. There was no movement. The raging flame bird spread along his body and spread to all the metal parts. On the spear, all the metal spears were melted almost instantly. The melting speed was beyond imagination, and Magneto King Eric frowned. There was something wrong with the flame. Logically speaking, 
with his ability to control the magnetic field, even if the metal spear is melted into molten iron, he can still change its properties and continue to control it. However, if he can't control the molten iron now, the problem must arise in the flame. Just like he couldn't control the chain at first. Very good ability. Magneto couldn't help but admire, it can directly affect his ability. Regardless of whether the person in front of him is a mutant or not, he wants to subdue him. This skeleton knight will become Magneto's judgment knight. But that consideration seeing how unruly this guy was before, Magneto decided to show his strength and conquer the opponent with his powerful force, letting the knight know how great the person he will follow is. Boom, I have an idea. Then Magneto will not talk nonsense. When he stretched out his hands, the ground shook in an instant. The whole city seemed to shake, and the ground shook violently, as if something terrible was about to be born. Originally, Burning Man John saw the knight likes to play with fire. He has always been proud of his abilities and wanted to show off his power with the new leader. As a result, he saw Magneto go crazy, and the terrifying pressure displayed in an instant almost suffocated him. When has the young man ever seen such a thing? The scene immediately turned pale with fright. Mystique Raven was the earliest follower of Magneto Eric. She looked at the scene where the air behind Magneto was almost distorted, and she immediately understood what Magneto was thinking. She immediately understood after taking a few steps back, the saber-toothed tiger was very smart and very sensible and followed him back, but only John stayed where he was. Seeing the young man's miserable performance, he reminded with a chuckle, John, I think you should step back. Eric, you are here. Show your greatness to our new members. John then reacted, suppressed the panic and admiration in his heart, and quickly backed away. The magnetic field in the entire street was disrupted, and it even began to spread to the city. He saw Magneto slowly floating up, and the city was densely covered with debris. The metal buried in the ground turned into a frenzy of metal particles. He ignored the safety of the city and unscrupulously vented his nearly devastating power. At night, the sky above the city was submerged by a torrent of metal, blocking the sky and the sun. It completely caused panic among the people in the city, and the frightened screams and shouts completely made the city boil. Magneto never cared about those stupid humans. He only cared about whether mutants would become greater. If necessary, he can even destroy a city. From the sky, Magneto's deep and old voice came. Floating in the sky, under the metal frenzy that blocked the sky and the sun, he was like a god, overlooking the man standing on the street. My own skeleton knight. Surrender to me, and I will lead you to greatness. We should not hide in the society of lowly humans, let alone hide in the darkness like a mouse. We can declare to the world that we are strong and join us. This will be the most correct decision in your life. That speech, which was like a god, showed his domineering power to the fullest. Whether it was Mystique Raven, Sabretooth Tiger, or the newly joined Pyro John, his eyes reflected the figure in the sky, showing reverence and worship. This this is the reason why they follow Magneto. They are born powerful, why should they succumb to humans? Unfortunately, the skeleton knight has no idea about this at all. He raised his skull, with faint flames burning in his empty eye sockets, and pointed his finger at the sky, with a low and hoarse voice, you should go to hell. Arrogance and stupidity. Magneto's eyes were cold, and he saw his right palm slowly pressing down. Boom. In an instant, the gravity structure of the entire street changed. The terrifying pressure instantly caused a large dent in the ground, and the skeleton knight and his ghost face motorcycle also instantly being pressed down, the skeleton knight instantly fell to his knees and could only support himself on the ground with his hands. The hellfire burning on the skull was sometimes extinguished and sometimes burned. His transformation state was suppressed by powerful external forces. Disappeared. The metal torrent turned into metal particles above Magneto has begun to riot, as if it can engulf the main block in an instant at any time. The power of one of the strongest mutants is fully demonstrated here. Standing on the rooftop of a house not far away to watch Wanda, Pietro and Sergei couldn't help but click their tongues. Holy crab, I can't handle this guy. Pietro felt his scalp was numb. This kind of display of power was a bit scary, especially the ability to change the structure of gravity with one hand, which seemed to have a lot of restraint on him. Sergei frowned. He felt like he couldn't handle it, so he looked at Wanda, how do you feel? Do we have a chance to steal people from him? 
Wanda raised her delicate face, her jewel-like eyes reflected the figure of Magneto, and said slightly, it's hard to say, but his ability is indeed strong. At this grade, he has developed his ability to a quite terrifying level. Combined with chaos magic and Pietro's ability, there might be a chance. Then do it, you can't call boss Liang anyway. Pietro said sternly, with the boss backing him up, he panicked. That's not a big deal, talk to him first. Wanda lowered her head and looked. The skeleton knight on the street could no longer hold on. The flaming skull form was forced by Magneto to disappear and turn back into a human again. When Magneto saw this, he raised his eyebrows and slowly landed. The gravity structure was changed back to its original state. Without the strong gravity suppression, the middle-aged man lay on the ground unable to hold on for a while, his chest rising and falling, and his face was a little confused. His name was Johnny Blair, originally he is just an ordinary star special effects driver, but for some reason, a few days ago, he felt as if he had another personality. At night, he would lose his flesh and blood and become a flaming skeleton knight, roaming the city streets wantonly, running wildly. In that state, another soul controlled the body, judged those guilty arbitrarily, and burned their souls. He was very scared, so he fled the original city. He once wanted to escape to the wilderness, but that soul could still control the body and drove a motorcycle back to the city. He was about to go crazy from the torture. Finally, today, he came to the city out of control. As expected, at night, he transformed again. That one the soul smelled the breath of sin and found Magneto, the mutant who was the most wanted blacklist in the United States. The good news was that the other party used powerful power to suppress the soul. The bad news was that the other party was looking down on him and planned to force him to he became his subordinate. Johnny could only silently feel helpless about his misfortune. Sighing, he climbed up from the ground with difficulty, looked at the terrorist leader Magneto, and said helplessly, if I say that I have no I can't control my body, do you believe it? I believe. Magneto nodded. After the ability is awakened, the more powerful the ability, the more likely it is to lose control. I can help you master your ability as soon as possible. The condition is that you let me join you. Good. But do you think I'm a mutant? Another consciousness is born out of nowhere. I think only a mutant could explain your current situation. Magneto looked like you were a mutant. In fact, from Magneto's perspective, he really only has this explanation, otherwise an ordinary human would suddenly turn into a skeleton that can play with fire. Johnny what else could he do? The vast ocean of metal in the sky that covered the sky was flowing, and it was obvious that if he didn't agree, he would be beaten. The situation was pressing. Johnny, who had no choice but to accept his fate, just hoped that the other party could really help him solve his physical condition. After all, the only explanation for his physical condition is what Magneto said. And just when Johnny was about to agree to join the Brotherhood, Magneto's eyes suddenly froze, and the three ravens not far behind him also aware of something, Pyro John overreacted and ignited the flame with a special fire device under his wrist. Pyro used his ability to control flames to instantly amplify the flame infinitely. He flicked his right hand violently, and in an instant, a terrifying monstrous fire the flame swept towards the side of the street in one direction like a fire dragon. Boom, the hot fire tornado distorted the air, and the red light dispersed the surrounding darkness. Johnny's eyes were filled with red flames, and he turned his head suddenly he looked at it. The next thing he saw was a jaw-dropping scene. It turned out that on the rooftop of a house across the street less than a few dozen meters away, three figures jumped down. The height of more than 10 meters seemed not worth it to the three of them. Lift, he fell heavily to the ground. The impact was extremely powerful. But what really shocked Johnny was when the terrifying roar of the fire tornado was about to engulf the three of them. The leader had beautiful, slightly curly dark blonde hair. The girl raised her hand gently and saw a surging red energy emerging, completely covering the terrifying fire tornado, and then she gently clenched her fist. The fire tornado was immediately engulfed by the red energy and turned into wisps of sparks that scattered across the sky. Under the sparks, the three people walked slowly over. The scene was truly unforgettable. Johnny was so shocked that he couldn't speak. In just a few days, he felt that a turning point had taken place in his life. Once again, he encountered something incomprehensible. People with special powers, 
who are usually not seen at all, appeared in front of him one after another. Johnny didn't even know whether it was luck or misfortune. Except for Johnny's bitter look on his face, Magneto saw when the beautiful girl in front of him extinguished John's flame, his eyes lit up, and a few more mutants appeared. And they were still very young. Lao Wan was filled with joy and couldn't let it go. He had to trick him into joining the Brotherhood. Such a good talent you have to cultivate it yourself. Lao Wan thought this way, but Pyro John's face was full of displeasure. He has always been proud of his own power, or he thinks that he is the best among mutants of his age. At that moment, a girl of the same age actually extinguished his anger. The hot-tempered John gritted his teeth angrily and was about to activate his ability again. But they didn't expect Wanda and the other three to notice, and Wanda turned around to look go, the beautiful eyes flashed with biting coldness, a terrifying murderous intention swept across instantly, and the girl's unique clean voice resounded. Do you want to die? What did you say? When the girl looked at him like this, John felt his heart twitch for a moment, and he felt an inexplicable fear, but then he yelled in anger, and he raised his hand. Bang! The next moment, his movement stagnated, because, he there was a cross sword attached to his neck. The sharp blade was close to his skin. A red line appeared. A calm voice came from his side. Moving. Dead. The big imprint of danger was in his mind, and the strong aura of death surrounded his heart, which made John swallow his mouth and dare not make any more moves. The originally unruly wild wolf immediately turned into a small creature under the blade of the sword. The milk dog showed off a well-behaved person. Beside them, Raven and Saber-toothed Tiger reacted. Seeing this scene, the latter roared and pounced on Sergei like a wild beast. But unfortunately, as soon as he pounced in the air, he saw a pair of red energy pillars composed of chaotic magic emerged out of thin air, and finally intersected to form a cage to imprison this terrible beast. The latter roared angrily and tried to tear open the cage with his claws, but unfortunately, his power could not shake the chaos magic at all. Mystique Raven, who originally wanted to take action together, glanced at the girl who stretched out her hand in the distance. She happened to look at the other girl as well. Raven shrugged and stood there knowingly. What an interesting ability. Over there, Johnny Blaze was so frightened by the battle that was over just after it started that he didn't dare to move. Over there, Magneto Eric was already applauding and praising. Whether it was Sergei, whose speed couldn't be seen clearly with the naked eye, or Wanda's skill in energy manipulation. They all made him appreciate it very much. Even if the young man standing next to Wanda did not take action, Magneto believed that the other party would not be a weak one, because the strong would never fight against the weak. Companion, this is the concept he believes in. Being controlled by, seven or seven, hands, Magneto was not angry. He could see that the three boys and girls in front of him did not have much malicious intent, and even if they took action, it was just to stop the fighting. He he looked at Wanda with admiration and said with a smile, it seems that today is destined to give me a good dream. Are you mutants too? Have no idea. Wanda shook her head. With her and Pietro's special abilities, she once doubted whether they were mutants. But on the issue of whether they were mutants, Liang and others didn't care at all. After all, even if Wanda and Pietro so what if they are mutants? Then they are all family members. So there is no difference. Naturally, the two of them have never struggled with this issue. But the ability of chaos magic, Liang once clearly said, comes from a very ancient and powerful life. But who is that life, Liang didn't say, he just said that it would be done with it, no problem. If there are problems, Liang will solve them when the time comes. Hearing Wanda's answer, Magneto knew what he was doing, and immediately acquiesced that Wanda's three were mutants, the mood has become good again, and the mutant group has grown stronger. With a happy mood, Magneto spoke in a very gentle tone, looking at Wanda and Pietro as if they were his nephews, what are your names? Wanda, Pietro, Seligai. Okay, then Wanda, you should have heard what I said before. We are born to be united. In the future, we will become new humans and dominate this world. Magneto's tone was passionate, trying to use his words and his personality charm to win over these three, juniors, with outstanding abilities. However, Wanda and Pietro looked a little weird. After looking at each other, the latter shrugged. Well, Mr. Eric, we respect your ideas and will not interfere with you, but we all have families and are very satisfied with our current lives, so I don't think there is a need to join your brotherhood. 
Pietro's somewhat straightforward words made the high-spirited Magneto freeze. He actually failed. Is it so difficult for young people to fool these days? The script is wrong. Magneto frowned, looked at the twins and said in a low voice, Then, why did you appear in front of me? If there is anything to stop me from destroying the city, it would be ridiculous. That's not true. Whether you destroy the city or not has nothing to do with us. Wanda answered without hesitation, and pointed her finger at Johnny Blaze, we just need a little bit of this gentleman's blood. Blood. This word immediately changed the expressions of Magneto and Mystique, and they immediately had bad thoughts in their minds. If Johnny is also a mutant, what does he need the blood of a mutant for? Experiment. No matter it is Magneto, Mystique and Raven have both experienced this in the past. They know too much about the cruel and bloody human experiments of mutants. For this reason, Magneto and Mystique founded the Brotherhood, with the intention of subvert the human government. Magneto's face, which was originally in a good mood, immediately turned gloomy. Boom! The metal frenzy floating in the sky became manic and turbulent with Magneto's mood. This sudden change made the city the citizens who had been calm once again screamed in panic. From the streets far away in the city, sirens were heard honking. They were thinking crazily that this block was coming. But neither Wanda nor Magneto paid attention. While looking at each other, Magneto stared at Wanda's delicate face with a gloomy face, and said in a low voice, Why do you want his blood? I don't know, but he needs to. Wanda answered without hesitation. He, the flame ignited in Magneto's heart became more and more powerful. This girl must have been deceived by some scumbag to attack her own people. He suppressed the anger in his heart and said softly, Can tell me who he is. Are you a human government person? Why is blood needed? Is it used for testing? A series of questions came over me. Wanda did not panic. She pondered for a moment and then replied, He is my family and the only pillar of this big family. I can tell you for sure, Mr. Eric, we are mutants don't mean any harm. I want to believe you, but if I don't get the exact answer, I won't let you take the blood of any mutant. My child, I have seen too many cruel scenes. Every time I think about it, it is a nightmare. Every time I wake up from my dream, I want to send all those fools to hell. Magneto said seriously. Johnny was slightly moved. Anyway, this old man looks very strong and domineering, but he is top-notch when it comes to protecting his shortcomings. Wanda and Pietro were also slightly moved. They seemed to have been one of them. Member, but Li Ang changed the fate of the children at that base. Wanda listened to the siren in her ears getting louder and louder 5.3. She whispered, Mr. Eric, I think you should still remember the Stryker experiment that incident at the base, right? When he heard the name Stryker, Magneto was shocked, but then he suddenly realized, you did at that time. Yes, I, Pietro, Sergei, once had the experiences Mr. Eric said, so we hate them. As she spoke, Wanda walked towards Johnny and took out the syringe from her waist. When the latter had a reluctant expression, Wanda smiled softly and stabbed it into Johnny's arm. Magneto's face was complicated. Frowning, thinking again and again but still not taking action to stop. After Wanda absorbed the blood, she put it back in her pocket and then looked at Magneto and said, Mr. Eric, in return, I can give you a reminder. Aha, the other consciousness in this gentleman's body does not come from this world. It is related to a very ancient life in the world. You should pay attention to it. Wanda said and nodded slightly towards Sergei in the distance. After saying that, Sergei put down the cross sword in his hand and walked to Wanda's side. Wanda turned around and waved, but there was no movement. I saw the figure blurring for an instant and disappearing from the same place. They were mysterious when they came, and they were chic when they left. The performance of Wanda and the three of them made Magneto and Mystique Raven very surprised. Mystique walked to Magneto and looked at the three of them. The person who disappeared frowned and said, Eric, it seems that our knight has a lot of secrets. Is he a consciousness from another world? Magneto is not an idiot. He can understand the meaning of Wanda's words, so he looked at Johnny thoughtfully. Johnny returned an innocent expression. He didn't know what happened. The siren sounded. It got louder and louder, Mystique Raven said, we have to go Eric. Um, Magneto glanced at the somewhat decadent Pyro John, and raised the corner of his mouth. He was shocked. This is a good thing. 
The sudden abnormal phenomenon in the city is considered to be the most serious in Texas, and the mayor is very angry about it. After all, the hole the metal from the city's underground structure was forcibly pulled out, causing immeasurable damage. Magneto was not kind enough to do the aftermath, which resulted in the government having to spend huge sums of money for repairs. Of course, these are yet another disputes between Magneto and the United States. The conflict intensified. It had nothing to do with Wanda and the three of them. After extracting the blood of the skeleton knight, the three of them got on the plane and returned to New York. By the time they returned to the manor, it was already the next morning. Wanda returned home the three of them took a quick bath, and then enjoyed the delicious and healthy breakfast prepared by the manor's exclusive chefs. Twenty-five except for Wanda, the others have not returned yet, and there are only four little ones in the manor, Liang. They are eating breakfast when they were young, the four little ones were very interested in Wanda's trip to Texas. Especially when they heard about the scene of meeting Mephisto and Magneto, the four little ones were extremely excited. Especially the 13-year-old Pushkin Pushkin, who thought he had grown up and become a man, had a look of yearning on his face when he heard Pietro talking about the spectacular scene of Leon and Mephisto fighting. Hell, Mephisto, devil, fight. This can be it really touched the heart of the little boy. He wished he could fight the demon king Mephisto for 800 rounds right there. Unfortunately, because he was too young and still in school, he was completely ordered not to participate in these important events by Liang, at least not it has to wait until the boy is 16 years old. Little Twinkle is also very interested and follows Wanda to ask for details. The two little girls Alina and Polina are not so interested. Compared to fighting and other things, they now they are more inclined to play with the two little sables and other animals. It was difficult for the two little girls to like animals when they were in the Ural Mountains. Especially furry ones. So much so that Liang was already thinking about adding some beasts to the manor. Cubs, such as lions and tigers. In fact, he also likes big cats. He liked big cats in his previous life. After the noisy breakfast time, it was time for the four little cubs to go to school. They were sent to school by the housekeeper. Pietro and Sergei murmured without knowing what he said, he drove directly into a McLaren sports car and left the manor. Leon and Wanda came to the beach on the coastline of the manor. The morning sun that had just risen over the skyline in the distance fell on the beach was dyed golden, and the sea breeze was refreshing. It made the two of them feel relaxed and happy. The golden beach was narrowly surrounding the sea, but it was endless. Leon and Wanda took off their shoes and walked barefoot on the beach. The sand flowed between the toes, and waves came in waves. Listening to the beautiful melody of the waves lapping on the shore, everything was so natural. The sea breeze blew their hair slightly, and the hems of their loose shirts rustled. All the way, there were rows of footprints of the two people left on the beach. Leon and Miss Witch were side by side. The difference between the height of 1.8 meters and the height of Wanda, who was 1.7 meters, was not too obvious. Wanda stretched out her hand, closed it and blew it on her cheek. He looked at the blue waves and sighed, it's so beautiful. It is indeed beautiful, and this planet will always give you reasons to fall in love with it. Li Ang chuckled, as long as there is no life or other pressures, and you calm down and observe the world, all kinds of scenery will make people fall in love with this planet. Of course, most people in the world cannot erase that feeling pressure. So yes, Liang doesn't want anyone to destroy this planet, not even humans themselves. He can fight the dimensional demons who covet the earth, and he can also ruthlessly kill the garbage who want to destroy the world. Wanda nodded she nodded, then turned around mischievously, quickened her pace and walked back while looking at Liang, and said in a girl's unique clear voice, I really want to stay like this forever. Maybe. Wanda stretched out her hand and rubbed the smooth hair of the girl in front of her as before. Wanda's delicate face was rosy and she showed a sweet smile. Then she said with some worry, Leon, will the emergence of hell be possible? What impact will it have on the earth? Who knows, but don't worry, even if Mephisto really has thoughts about the earth by then, I will kill that guy. Hee <laughs> hee, you are so confident, that is the devil. What about the demon king? I'm much stronger than you think don't underestimate me. I never underestimated you. Wanda stuck out her little tongue playfully, blowing in the sea breeze, and asked again, Leon, you asked us to go around the world to collect the blood of those undead species to train us. 
Didn't you already guess it? Li Ang looked at the girl with an expression that said, don't pretend to be confused with me, which made Wanda laugh. She knew that she would not be able to hide it from Liang. Because both parties knew each other too well. It's really hard to believe that you fused the genes of those undead species to create a super warrior serum to strengthen us. Thank you for your hard work. In fact, in a sense, it is you who have to work hard. Liang didn't lie. Wanda and the others got the blood by themselves. As long as he gave an order casually, Tian Renqi could help him solve everything. On the contrary, he was the most laid-back one. Wanda didn't know clearly, but she knew that Liang had a secret that she didn't know. But the girl was very smart. Seeing that Liang didn't mean to say anything, of course she wouldn't ask. Instead, she talked about another incident. After stopping, the two of them started talking. Standing at the edge of the beach, letting the waves wash over her ankles and feeling the coolness of the water, she said casually, I plan to go find that guy with Pietro. Today, well, when Pietro comes back, then remember to come back early for dinner. Li Ang didn't say much, he just gave a little warning as usual, which made Wanda's beautiful eyes curve up like crescent moons. I want to eat steamed garlic lobster. I really want to eat it. The girl likes to eat seafood very much, especially lobsters. I'll have Dirk ready and I'll make sure you eat it until you're tired of it. Okay, I'll go find Natasha first. The underground laboratory of the Seaview Villa in New York. In the spacious and luxurious laboratory, the hanging photos and decorations are full of unique flamboyant style. Bright and gorgeous are synonymous with it. In the laboratory, there are many various precision instruments and metal workbench. Tony Stark sat on an expensive privately customized artificial chair, leaning on the back of the chair and rubbing his eyebrows, his face full of exhaustion. Sir, you have stayed up for 48 hours straight and it has been detected that you are extremely tired and it is time for you to sleep. A gentle boy came into Tony's ears. Tony stared at the technical drawings he had stayed up all night to draw up, and said perfunctorily, thank you for your concern Jarvis, maybe I can fall asleep in 10 hours. That must be a good dream. Sir, this is a text message from Miss Pepper. I hope you can sleep normally. Well, what did she do? Miss Pepper is negotiating with the military on behalf of you and Mr. Odiba. Ha, our Pepper has begun to behave like a president. Maybe I should promote her to the position of CEO. Tony flicked through the holographic projection technology diagram in front of him, nodded and teased you casually. I think Miss Pepper will be very cheerful. Aha, uh -huh, Jarvis, place the order according to the technical drawing, we are going to start a big fight now. Okay, sir. Tony stretched and relaxed, and the exhaustion from staying up all night came back. He stood up unsteadily, opened the special tempered glass door and walked upstairs. He walked to the hall and came to the bar. I poured myself a glass of whiskey before going to bed, and just when I was about to take a sip. Jarvis's voice came again. Sir, Ms. Natasha is visiting. Wow, this year is really a double blessing. Tony raised his eyebrows. He was holding a wine glass and wearing only a thin gray sweater. He walked to the living room and saw the door open automatically. Natasha in a black windbreaker came over with two other unknown people. See you. When he arrived at Natasha, Tony was a little wary because the other party was too mysterious. But he was quite curious about the two people she brought and didn't know what Natasha, this mysterious and beautiful woman, wanted to do. But Tony still welcomed her. Go up. Open your arms and look happy. Hey, Ms. Natasha, nice to see you here. It's too early for you to be happy, Tony. Natasha didn't give any face at all, and stood motionless in front of Tony, her delicate face full of indifference. Natasha's look made Tony frown secretly, and suddenly felt something bad in his heart. Tony remained calm, and on the surface it was still like a joke. Then I hope you won't break my mood with bad news, Natasha. I'm sorry Tony. It's not me who came to see you today. Natasha's attitude was still the same indifferent. This made Tony's heart sink. He stood there and looked at Natasha and the two unseen children next to him in surprise. He frowned and looked at the three of them in a deep voice. Said, so, you are looking for me. Tony Stark, when he saw his enemy, Pietro's eyes were filled with coldness, and his strong murderous intent was not concealed at all. Click. The moment Pietro showed his cold murderous intent, he saw the walls and ceiling structure of the entire villa suddenly flipped and changed. 
the ceiling squares shrank one by one, and various weapons were aimed at the three people. This was followed by Jarvis's warning. It has been detected that the target has acted unfavorably towards Mr. Level 1 alert. Please give up resistance. Otherwise, he will be killed immediately. According to the law, boom. He saw that the girl was impatient. Her bright eyes were colored red, and she suddenly stretched out her hand and made a fist. In an instant, red chaotic energy engulfed the entire villa. Under this energy, the ceiling, walls, and weapons flipped on the floor were all torn apart and twisted by this energy. Even the entire Sea View Villa was shocked. In the hall, all the glass products on the tables and the bar were blown to pieces, but Tony was the only one standing there without any harm. Sir, I have. Jarvis's voice came, and he wanted to say something but was directly interrupted by Tony. Jarvis, cancel the first level alert and defense mode. Okay sir, level 1 alert and defense mode have been cancelled. It took Jarvis two seconds to answer. This was obviously completely inconsistent with the reaction speed of his artificial intelligence. It was obvious that the Jarvis algorithm was delayed because of the conflict between the on-site image analysis and the command. Tony also knew that there was no time to do it. After paying attention, he picked up the wine glass in his hand, drank it all in one gulp, walked slowly to the shelf next to him, and then said calmly, we thought that even if we were not friends, we should still be considered partners. Can you tell me the reason why you do this? Or did someone pay a higher price than me? This is what Tony doesn't understand. It was easy for Tony to turn off his alert and defense systems. That is, he understands that when the defense system built by Villa treats ordinary people, or even a special operations force, he thinks he will be unscathed. But now we are facing several superhuman beings. Especially the red energy released by the girl, which instantly destroyed all the defensive weapons in the hall, is enough to prove the huge gap. If the other party really wants to kill him, no matter what he does now, it will be useless. It's better to face it calmly, even if he dies, he will die clearly. However, Tony does not know that there is another rule in Jarvis's built-in regulations, that is, life safety is the first priority, so Jarvis still sends distress signals to the outside world. Natasha, Wanda and Pietro appreciated Tony's calmness in the face of desperate situations, but they still couldn't let Wanda and Pietro give up revenge. Wanda took two steps forward, her delicate and sweet face full of anger. She gritted her teeth and said to Tony, Tell me, do you remember that there is a country called Kosovia in this world? Kosovia, Tony frowned and recited the name of this country. It was originally a country in Eastern Europe. It was very poor and backward. Pietro and I were once ordinary people in that country. Although we were poor, we had a warm home. However, when we were 10 years old, the war broke out. Got it. The explosion destroyed the building we lived in. The building collapsed. Our parents also died in the war that day. Pietro and I survived, but just when we were about to escape, a missile flew down from the sky and hit less than one meter away from the two of us. Wanda slowly narrated to Tony angrily. The anger caused red energy to flow around her body, and her golden hair became windless. A breath of terror spread throughout the villa. Under this powerful breath, Tony it was as if he was carrying a huge mountain on his back, and his heart felt pain. Breathing also became difficult, but Tony still listened quietly. Pietro also walked to Wanda's side, staring at this person with hatred. The man who destroyed his family. Wanda's voice continues. We relied on each other. We couldn't leave the collapsed apartment at all. We could only keep our eyes wide open and stare at the misfiring missile. We didn't know when it would explode. We just watched it for two days. And the name on the missile is Stark Military Industries. Tell me, Tony Stark, do you think you deserve to die? The girl's delicate voice was like sharp steel knives, spreading throughout the villa. Tony Stark was in the storm of these steel knives and could be cut to pieces at any time and anywhere. Facing Wanda, the Piro twins looked at each other with hatred and hatred. Tony fell into silence. He recalled what the female reporter who had slept with him said to him, and recalled the Jericho missile that kidnapped his group of terrorists. What should he say? Why, justify yourself. The Stark group, since its father established it, has developed countless weapons and supplied a large amount of arms to the U.S. military. How many wars has the United States created and how many civilians have been killed? He had never thought about it. Because he had never seen it in his own shoes. 
he had always been in his own world, in the upper class society, traveling to banquets, casinos and other places, enjoying people's flowers and appreciation, and enjoying countless women flocked to him. Enjoying the world of his own genius. He did not go to the outside world to see the difficulties of the poor people. He was tortured by the war and countless families were broken. Because his world has always been narrow. It was not until he was kidnapped for several months that his world was broken, and he realized that the Stark Arms Department had manufactured weapons for the world over the years. How many killings had been committed? So after he returned, he chose to close the Arms Department. But he still did not intuitively feel the pain of those who had been baptized by the fire of war, until the two children in front of him stood in front of him, with those hateful eyes with his eyes and gritted teeth, he recounted his experience when he was ten years old. It was hard for Tony to imagine that two children who were only ten years old were huddled in the corner of the ruins, staring at the missiles one meter away for two days, feeling so helpless. Panic, fear, and despair were so great. Tony's heart felt like heart-wrenching pain. He looked at the two children in front of him in silence. He slowly closed his eyes, and his tired face became calm. He did not explain anything. After opening his eyes, he walked to Wanda and Pietro with heavy and guilty steps. I'm sorry, I know that no matter what I do, I can't make up for you, and those who died because of the war, and those broken families, maybe I should go to hell after my death. Tony said calmly with a self-deprecating tone. Jarvis, gentlemen, after my death, I will make a will to pay Bo. Now pay Bo has been appointed as the president and executive officer of Stark Group. All my shares will be transferred to her, but she is required to receive all the benefits every year. 10% belongs to myself, and the rest is used to establish a charitable foundation. And all my existing assets and funds will be used to find relief for children and people around the world who are suffering from war, illness, and homelessness. Mr. Jarvis, make it up. Well sir, may you rest in peace. Jarvis's voice echoed in the villa, but Wanda and Pietro looked a little surprised, looking at the man who seemed to be relaxed in front of them. Tony saw the expressions of the two people. If it were in the past, he would definitely use a mischievous expression. The adult had a teasing expression. But now, he just calmly said to the two children, I hope my death can bring you out of the haze. I think you don't want me to laugh at you in hell. In addition, Jarvis will tell the police that I died voluntarily, and you will not be troubled by it in the future. Of course, people in the world who may be happy because of my death may also gloat. On the streets of New York City, a black SUV flan was racing crazily on the road. Even if he ran several red lights in a row, he didn't care. As a result, the traffic police were immediately aware of the situation and immediately chased him in their car. They also contacted the backstage to ask other police for support. That's so arrogant. You're driving wildly on the streets of New York. Don't you know it's rush hour in the morning and the speed limit is 45 kilometers per hour? You are so crazy that you even ran red lights and caused many car accidents. Amazing driving skills. Frankie, I will punish you to death for your arrogant fool. Behind them, the police cars kept up quickly, but no matter how fast they raced, they could not catch up with the Chevrolet SUV. However, the car still cared about its own business and was still able to shuttle flexibly through the city's morning rush hour. In the car, the person driving was none other than Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. He held the steering wheel again and again and drove towards the Seaview Villa, while continuously giving orders loudly. Hill, send out Quinjets and put snipers on standby. Five Quinjet fighters have already taken off and are expected to arrive in three minutes. Snipers are also on standby, and the Rapid Reaction Special Forces led by Rumlow have also arrived. Hill's calm voice came from the earphones. Fury did not answer any more, but said, Get rid of the followers behind me. Clear. After the explanation, Nick Fury stepped on the accelerator. Like Black Lightning, he ignored the red light and the traffic, and passed through in a short gap. There were bursts of breaking and crashing sounds immediately behind him. But these Nick Fury Rui didn't care at all. He looked at the projected route displayed on the front windshield and frowned. Someone actually broke into the villa directly, and the peripheral security system didn't respond. What a hell. Tony Stark was originally an alternative in his list of future plans. It was only an alternative. He didn't pay too much attention to Tony, 
not even as much as the big green monster pursued by the military. Intel, Shield. After Tony returned, Shield found the top of the canyon in the desert based on the almost disappearing tire marks of the military's lost Humvee. The canyon was buried due to a huge explosion of 330 meters. But everything inside was buried. But Shield still spent a lot of manpower and force to dig out the cave and found corpses that were blown to pieces. It was difficult to find clues from the corpses as to why Tony suddenly escaped, but to the surprise, Shield was still collapsing. A huge surprise was unearthed in the cave. A very inferior and rough work. A huge steel armor. Although it was buried, it was not blown into pieces by the big explosion. It was only partially crushed by the rock. After repairing it, experts from the Scientific Research Department of the Shield Bureau obtained a complete armor. But the result was unexpected. According to experts, the armor was very mature. Although the function was very rough and leaky, it could be driven by an energy source. Think of it Tony's chest micro-reactor, and surveillance revealed that Tony has been locked up in the villa and unable to take it out. Judging from the previous orders placed with major companies, Tony must be building a brand new and very advanced armor. Can Tony the armor was built with priority in the cave. Fury had no doubt how advanced and complete the functions of the second set of armor would be. Therefore, Tony Stark's importance immediately increased greatly, not to mention, he obtained the armor from Colonel Roddy. Only Tony could know the clues about the mysterious woman. Adding up the clues, nothing Nick Fury could do would make anything happen to Tony. I hope it's too late, Howard, and you'd better hope your son doesn't die so early. The living room of the Seaview Villa fell into a strange silence. Wanda and Pietro looked at the guy who died calmly in front of them, with mixed feelings in their hearts. Tony is indeed an enemy, but they have to admire his current courage. Natasha just standing behind him with his hands folded, he watched quietly, his red lips raised slightly, and he already had the answer in his heart for the next direction of the situation. Wanda, Pietro hesitated and looked at Wanda. The latter didn't look back, just looked at Tony steadily, his eyes flashed red, and his figure disappeared instantly, appearing in front of Tony like a ghost, his index finger pointed on Tony's chest, and touched that spot. On the arc reactor. If I just apply a little force, you'll die. Wow, this is not a good way to die. If the reactor is punctured, it will cause radiation leakage and the surrounding environment will be affected. Jarvis, send a message to disperse. Tony remained calm, knowing that he would die in pain, he still asked Jarvis to evacuate the crowd outside the villa. But Wanda interrupted. No need. Um, Tony looked at the girl's bright red eyes in confusion. Everything you say is true. My ability allows me to easily sense your emotions. You are different from some fools, until. Originally, I had no intention of killing you like this. I would control your mind and make you an unconscious puppet. I will imprison your consciousness in a world I set up. That world is like hell. Countless souls who died because of Stark's weapons will eat your consciousness all the time until I die. In your memory, I saw that the Stark Group's arms cooperation partner is the US military, right? Good. The Stark Group was founded by his father Howard during World War II and made a lot of war fortune. However, as a leader in the arms field, its arms research and development efforts are among the best in the world, so its sales partners have always been the US military. And because agreement, advanced arms cannot be sold to other countries. Once sold, it will inevitably be directly suppressed by the US military government. Wanda nodded, and her angry face gradually calmed down. She looked at Tony. If not you shut down the arms department, and I read your memory. You will definitely die. Thank you for your weak conscience, Mr. Stark. After saying that, she turned around and walked out of the villa. Pietro held the back of his head with his hands, helplessly looking at his sister's back, and could only follow her. Tony was let go in such a daze, and he was a little surprised. He looked towards the villa the backs of Wanda twins walked out and looked at Natasha who had been watching the show, so, what is this? Your performance just now was perfect. I admire you and I have a new understanding of you, Mr. Stark. Natasha winked at Tony seductively, then turned and left. As her back gradually disappeared outside the door, a slightly magnetic and hoarse voice came. Don't forget to trade with us, and look forward to our next meeting. The moving and charming voice gradually disappeared, but Tony did not feel the slightest joy. Instead, 
he was filled with doubts and fear. When he began to face death calmly, he seemed calm, but suddenly he found that he was no longer dead in the blink of an eye. The emotions immediately came to my heart. I'm not looking forward to our next meeting at all. Tony felt that both of his legs were numb. He trembled and walked to the sofa and sat down. He leaned on the back of the sofa and kept breathing. It's been a bad day, Jarvis. I'm glad you don't have to die, sir. Ah, I'm very happy too. Tony, who had already been up for two days, was overwhelmed by all the extreme emotions just now, and fatigue swept over his body in an instant. He leaned on the sofa, slowly closed his eyes and fell into a deep sleep. At this time, the sky outside the villa, several Quinjet fighters have already been in place. Due to the special location of the villa, no gathering can be found at ordinary angles, so the Quinjet fighter can only be used to float in the air in a straight state. Fortunately, the anti-gravity engine technology is very perfect on the Quinjet fighter. Enough to support this store. The hatch opened, and the elite sniper agent lay on the deck of the hatch, holding a sniper rifle and aiming it at the living room of the focused villa. However, from the scope, all he saw was Tony's, the target of rescue. Tucker was leaning on the sofa alone with his eyes closed, and there was no one else in sight, but the living room was in a mess. The weapons on the ceiling, floor, and walls seemed to be forcibly twisted and destroyed by some force. The sniper was shocked. Could it be that the target had been killed? Then looking carefully at Tony's chest through the scope, there were ups and downs, but he was not dead yet. The sniper quickly covered his earphones and reported. Director, how is it going? The person who broke into the villa was nowhere to be seen. The target was still alive, but perhaps not in a good condition, and seemed to be in a coma on the sofa. Z. Outside the sea view villa, the Chevrolet braked suddenly, and with a bang sound, it turned off after Nick Fury got out of the car. Coincidentally, the Rapid Response Operations Special Forces, led by Agent Rumlow of S.H.I.E.L.D., had also stopped. Arriving there, they were fully armed and deployed outside the villa. Seeing Nick Fury's arrival, a strong agent named Rumlow wearing a S.H.I.E.L.D. Kevlar combat uniform walked over. He had a light stubble and said, looking at Fury, he said, quote, advance immediately and enter the villa, and be careful. Quote, comma, quote. Rumlow nodded and turned around raised his right fist high, and whispered, advance in a ladder style, guard all sides. A reaction force of more than 30 people, fully armed, immediately advanced under the leadership of Rumlow, with Nick Fury following behind. The security personnel outside the villa had already fully controlled it when the rapid response special forces arrived, so the progress was very smooth and the villa was immediately taken over. The artificial intelligence Jarvis is not an artificial retard and has identified everyone's identities. There's no way around it, every agent and unit of S.H.I.E.L.D. has a code to make it easier to do things. Therefore, no early warning or alert was issued. In fact, it was useless to enter the alert state. The defense system was completely shattered. After entering the villa, the rest of the combat team immediately went on alert and searched the villa to see if there were any enemies left. Nick Fury strode up to Tony in a black trench coat, bent over and looked at Tony who was extremely exhausted and fell into a baby-like sleep. He stretched out his hand and slapped Tony's face unceremoniously. The powerful blow to the face still made Tony wake up reluctantly from his deep sleep. He opened his eyes in a daze, and saw a dark face and a shiny bald head. He subconsciously shouted vaguely, Where did the braised eggs come from, Jarvis? Hearing Tony's words, the other agents on guard pursed their lips and tried not to laugh. They were professionals in terms of control. Nick Fury's face was expressionless. He patted Tony's face again to wake him up, and the crisp snapping sound highlighted a revenge. Tony woke up immediately after being slapped in retaliation. He knocked away the black hand that tried to slap his face, rubbed his somewhat red face, raised his head unhappily and looked at the brazed black man in front of him, and said, so, who are you? Came to save you. So this is how you saved me. Tony rubbed his face, with an expression like if you don't give me an explanation, I will kill you. At this time, Rumlow came over and said in front of Nick Fury, Sir, we searched and found nothing. The others seemed to have left. Fury nodded, and Rumlow automatically backed away. Fury continued to look at Tony Stark and said in a low voice, So, let's talk. 
Old Tony looked at Fury for a while, and the latter stared at him with his one eye, feeling full of oppression. The former patted, stood up, walked to the bar, and glanced at the special agent who automatically walked to the outside of the villa to be on guard. The soldier held a broken glass and poured a glass of wine into the whiskey bottle that had only a small part left. He took a sip and stimulated his nerves a little. He leaned on the bar and held up his hands, hugging his chest. So, which department do you belong to? FBI, CIA. The response is very fast. Have you been paying attention to me? I'm the director of the Homeland Strategic Defense Attack and Logistics Support Agency. Um, I think I've heard of this name before. That name seems to be from your department. Didn't he tell you for me? Did I say that this name is too convoluted? We'll abbreviate it later. So Tony, tell me, what are you trying to hide? Fury looked directly into Tony's eyes. Conceal, what do you think I want to hide? Tony sneered, took a sip of wine, and dismissed it. On the day I was attacked, a black guy came in with a bunch of men. In the name of saving me. As he spoke, he stood up straight, looked at Fury, and said, what are you hiding again? Intercepted Jarvis's distress signal, and he turned sideways and pointed at the floating dot in the sky in the distance outside the villa. An aircraft with that kind of technology is not built by an ordinary organization. Jarvis recognized your face and concluded that it was the FBI. What do you want to do? Close to me, spy on me, protect me. Fury stared at Tony, watching him drink whiskey slowly. He wanted to read the information he wanted from the other person's face and eyes. Tony's character was too distinct. Logically speaking, this guy it was impossible to hide it from him. But Fury discovered that at this moment, he couldn't see what Tony was thinking. Those bloodshot eyes seemed to be laughing at something, but they were also a little calm. They were not calm at all. Like this guy. Even when he's mocking himself, he's so bland. You are deliberately hiding the whereabouts of the guy you just met. Fury affirmed. In Tony's disapproving expression, he paused and said contemptuously, You are indeed very smart Tony. I can tell you clearly that I am not interested in you as a person. What I am interested in is your brain. Although I hate to admit it, like Howard, you are one of the few geniuses in the world. But now, I care more about your experience. Hearing this, Tony couldn't help but frown. Fury said to himself, Our agents use their lives to stabilize the world, so how can you hit those women on a bed worth hundreds of thousands of dollars? Believe me, we will definitely track down those people you meet. I don't care why you conceal the whereabouts of those guys, but they may become a destabilizing factor in this world. After he finished speaking, he pointed to his eyes with both fingers, and then pointed to Tony's eyes. The meaning is self-evident, it is a straightforward expression, I will always look at you. However, Tony replied, look at the clown-like expression. Tony couldn't get the answer here. Nick Fury turned around and left the villa and returned to his Chevrolet. Rumlow came over at this time. We questioned the security here, and they all said that no one was found entering, and everything on the surveillance screen showed normal. This is really interesting, Fury sneered. So the group of people who came today are all ghosts. This thing is really weird. This reminds me of several equally weird things, removing our people. Fury was thoughtful. After explaining to Rumlow, he returned to the car and started the ignition and left. Needless to say, the qualities of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents were all evacuated in a short time. Tony's Tucker's Sea View Villa returned to silence again. Inside the villa, Tony walked to the balcony by himself, looking at the sea in the distance that was glowing golden in the sun. Jarvis's voice came to his ears. Sir, based on facial recognition and calculations, the search result is that on March 30, 1999, a war air raid occurred in Kosovia. The entire city was plunged into flames of war, with more than 32,000 casualties. Press the record again, there is a family named Oleg, Mr. and Mrs. Maximo who meet the requirements. The Maximo couple were included in the death list, and the two twins, 10-year-old Wanda Maximo and Pietro Maximo, were exhumed and rescued two days later. Afterwards, the twins were placed in an orphanage. Then, Wanda and her sister accidentally escaped from the orphanage half a year later and have been wandering ever since, unable to be investigated later. Tony listened to Jarvis's narrative. In his ears, he seemed to be able to hear the wailing and screaming of the country caught in the war. 
The ground was covered with corpses and burning ruins. The eyes of the young children one after another were full of fear and fear. Despair. This involuntary image made Tony clenched his fist in his right hand. The girl's voice echoed in his ears. We relied on each other. We couldn't leave the collapsed apartment at all. We could only keep our eyes wide open and stare at the misfiring missile. We didn't know when it would explode. We just watched it for two days. And the name on the missile is Stark Military Industries. Tell me, Tony Stark, do you think you deserve to die? Every word was like a steel knife inserted into his heart, causing pain and suffering. The adult world has always been about interests, especially for capitalists, they are always staring at that. Whether the serial number has increased, and whether his social status has increased. Why should he care about the life and death of civilians? In essence, although Stark military industry provided missiles and arms, it was not the Stark group that started the war. Even the tragic experience of Wanda and Pietro has no direct connection with Tony. The twins and even the real culprit of the tragedy in Kosovia cannot be Tony Stark. But Tony is still full of self-blame, because he is different from other capitalists. He is arrogant and high-profile, but he still has at least a conscience in his heart. He also has the most basic empathy. So facing the revenge of the twins, he can choose to die calmly. He used all his assets to establish a charity fund to make his last contribution. This unexplainable pain made Tony stare blankly on the balcony, blowing the sea breeze, not knowing what he was thinking. So, is this the only reason why you let that playboy go? On the riverside balcony of the New York National Park, Natasha leaned on the railing and looked at the girl in front of her and asked. Wanda was wearing an ordinary fashionable shirt and a peaked cap at the moment, holding her hands on the railing, looking at the river below, and said softly, Actually, I had already figured out a lot a long time ago. Our real enemy is indeed not him. Without his final calmness, I would have killed him. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.